and the family Force TA and the up to 1600cc class. So we're into double drivers for this 1600cc class and after Liam we'll have Steve Marr who's sharing uh, Richard Spedding's Raptor. So Liam Cooper across the across the meadow up to Orange East Bray while Sierra Bosman at a 52.24. So that fact, 40.69 for Liam Cooper. And times generally seem to be quicker than yesterday. Even though it's just practice, a lot of people running quicker than their competitive runs yesterday. Alan Warburton, number 709, is following Steve Marr. He's sharing with his son David. We'll see you uh, shortly. Forty point six five for Steve Marr, just quicker than four hundred quicker than Liam Cooper and Alan Warburton and at the top of East Bray. Son David qualified second for the runoff yesterday. Oh and Dave Juren having trouble getting off the line there in the fourth T A, but he only moved a few inches. But uh, he'll have another go. Dave sharing the car with Darren Gumley this weekend. Alan Warburton is a 40.25 A great start there from Dave in the uh, unfamiliar Force TA David's Gould, which he shares with Nicola Mingus normally, uh, broke his gearbox two weeks ago at uh, Shelsey Walsh. And they've been unable to get a replacement yet. A 38.97 for David. If he repeats that in the runs this afternoon, he could qualify for the runoff. A 38.97. Sharing the uh, Ian Tucker's OMS. And uh, then we have Sean Gould in the uh, Gould GR59, the first of the big over two litre cars to take his practice run, his second practice run. Sean sharing, as usual, with, with Matthew Ryder. Thirty-seven point seven four for Sean. His uh, second practice time of the day. Simon Andrews with OMS, who's now sharing with Trevor Willis, who is a uh, car developed an engine problem uh, yesterday. So Simon Andrews uh, finishes the batch off. And a 44.07. 
Yeah, so Dave, you're in number six, is sharing uh, with uh, Darren Gumbley this weekend. And uh, Nicola was due to share, well, she did share with uh, Father George yesterday in the classic Chevron, but unfortunately that car had an engine problem yesterday as well, so she will not be appearing today and the car will not be appearing. So um, Nicola, I'm sure, will be helping others in the paddock um, get their cars prepared. And looking forward to seeing the rest of the large engine, large engine single seaters coming up shortly. Yesterday we had a, an interesting day here at Dune, with a, quite a dry day until just during the top 12 runoff, when um, after I just started to spit a little bit at the start of the runoff, and uh, the, as it ran through, the rain got steadily heavier, and then just before, just after Wallace Ming is through to fourth the last one to run. Just after that the track got slightly damper and uh, the last three runners, Scott Moran, Dave Warburton and Alex Summers, were partly affected by the rain. And um, unfortunately Alex finished 11th, Dave 12th and Scott just scored three points. So hello to everybody online uh, on uh, streaming and thank you for the uh, comments received so far. Great coverage again, we'll hope to keep it going Russ this afternoon. And Tom Riding, our regular now on our streams here. Yes, hello to all the fans around the world. And of course, all the fans here home in Britain. Britain. So this is the classic Dunhill climb in Scotland. Uh, first run in 1968. And been around in the championship, the British championship since 1969. Missed a couple of occasions of uh, runs. We had uh, one event cancelled because of a, an oil tanker strike, oil tanker driver strike, which uh, affected petrol supplies in the area. And uh, obviously in 2001, we had uh, cancellations because of the, the prevalence of foot and mouth disease in Scotland. But uh, doing the present in the calendar uh, as an anticipated event always since 1969. This June weekend, our only uh, championship event of the year at Doon. And we had one championship run yesterday and one championship run today. Hill, as you can see, look in great condition. And the time today is slightly quicker overall, really, for most people since yesterday. We've had three class records yesterday. And we've actually had a clash record again this morning in the Scottish, and I'll explain this a bit later if I can. Basically, the, uh, the Scottish Championship runners running in Scottish Championship classes have, and some of them are running in the national classes, they've been having competitive runs in amongst the practice runs and um, in this last, his first competitive run in his Renault Clio, Derek Rossley, uh, set a 50.22 in class A1, which just pipped the record set yesterday by James Hudson in his golf in a 50.30. So uh, Derek Rossley has now achieved a lifetime ambition, I think, to create that class record in the road going up to, four, up to two litres. So yes, we've got a mixture here of Scottish competitors competing in their own separate classes and also and amongst the national classes, but still eligible for championship points. It's also the class of license that you hold. So that's that batch returned to the paddock. We're one more batch of about 25 cars, and then we'll be uh, having a break for lunch. It's the first car to the line. There's a newcomer to uh, the hill here at Dune, all the way up from southern England. It's Andy Short in his 1600 OMS, usually seen down at Wiscombe Hill Climb in Devon and other southwestern hills. But was persuaded to come up here and is uh, 
totally enjoying himself and in previous times all the way through the weekend. This again is a practice run for Andy. Started off yesterday with a 14 second run. Started off a 14 second run yesterday and uh, finished up with a, a 45 second run in the timed run. So finding seconds. If only he's come to a halt coming out of coming out of tunnel, he's crawling up the hill. He's crawling up the hill now. He's still going, but very very slowly. It's the second purple car for Tolbooth um, this weekend. Uh, the Fleshers and their purple OMS have also trouble. And this is now Andy Short having just glides past the camera there up towards Junction. Obviously not a happy car. So they'll probably turn him around at Junction and uh, hopefully get him back down. See some of the design features of the OMS 2007 car. This so uh, 16 years old, carbon fiber, and like the, all the cars in this class, running a 1600cc Suzuki engine. Oh, apart. Uh, Okay, apparently Andy Short will be getting a rerun. Um, there was an issue on the hill, so um, he'll be uh, not a problem with the car. So he'll be getting turned round. I presume we're going back down again. So probably no issue with Andy Short's car there, he'll be coming back down for a rerun. <sighs> and here we've got a, a message from David Thompson who is apparently on the meadow watching it. Uh, live presumably, and also on the stream so uh, welcome David I'm not sure if the uh, microphone the Tano system reaches up there I'm just looking at the camera showing the exit of Junction and the whole crowd of you there hope you're enjoying yourself just Andy Shaw's car just been turned around two marshals Getting into position to get the wheels on the right way down the hill. And yeah, a good luck message there from Paul Wilkins for Team Tillicutri Quarries. Wallace, Duncan and Stuart Dow. Duncan Barnes and Stuart Dow. So thanks for that message, Paul. So Andy Short coming down past Oak Tree towards the finish of his cruise down the hill. He'll be turned round here at the start line and given a rerun. As I say, he started off yesterday with a 49.34 and his timed run, competition run, was in the 45s. And he's registered for, uh, and he's registered for the championship and the cup, so he could in theory qualify for top 12. But in theory, I uh, really we're looking for a 40 second run as being the, uh, the target to get into a qualifier, the 12th qualifier yesterday. 
with da David Tatham on a 39.48. So it's good to see a one litre car getting into the runoff here at Dune. But obviously, with troubles for Trevor Willis and Dave Duran, we've lost a couple of potential top 12 runners unless they can find a bit more time today. And Dave certainly put a good practice run in there. So he's getting used to that car of Darren's. So yeah, with Tyus Turnandy's short car, very limited turning circle on these cars, of course. But gradually being pushed back to the start line by the start line marshals. And the rest of the runners patiently waiting. Mandy will be followed up by, um, unfortunately, again, another non runner today with Neil Coles and Alex Coles in the family OMS. Again, an engine issue yesterday on Neil's timed run. Uh, it was a fail, which meant Alex didn't get a chance to go. Uh, so they will not be appearing today. So the car after Andy Short will be Simon Mackay. Uh, first of our two Scottish Raptor drivers. He'll be close followed by Stuart Shogden. Simon had a wild, uh, wide moment at the top of East Bray in qualifying yesterday. And we're down at 42, but Stuart, Stuart was second in class, qualified for the runoff. And he's getting mentioned there on our messages from online qualified for the runoff and finished in third position uh, as a result partly of the weather but also some fast driving from Stuart himself Stuart running number 10 but he'll be coming up shortly this is Andy Short having his rerun And uh, now you're looking for Simon Mackay in the red laptop. Andy Short pushing hard through the oak tree there. And safely through the garden gate up through the tunnel. Using all the width at junction exit. Yeah, he's obviously getting used to the hill. There's some really uh, good lines through the top faces there. Simon Mackay and Stuart sure Stogden to be a Royal Battle Royal in the uh, Scottish Championship, seven by one hundred of a second at Goldsby recently. Wow, Simon's on it this time. It's really quick through, really quick through all three. I say, uh, good practice yesterday. Then the qualifying one, he just ran out right at, at um, the top of his spray. If you watch it on screen, these cars just really so quick looking through these uh, corners. Bit of a slide at the top of the East Bray from Simon. Still practice runs, remember. Stuart was third on his way. The two Raptors pursuing each other. Simon Mackay was 39.05, 39.05. So a cautious I say, Simon runs. Stuart third in lane all the way through. Yes. <laughs> Sure, on purple sectors all the way at the moment for the class, so fastest in class so far, all over the hill. We're looking for 37 run this time. 37.32, that's quicker than his qualifying run yesterday. So if he does that again in the competition qualifying run today, he should be in the runoff again. Uh, that's Olivia Cooper on the hill. You don't have a name on the screen, but it's Olivia Cooper in the family TA. Former ladies record holder here. At Dune. All the battle royal between Olivia and Liam, her husband, every time they come to the hill. And uh, the children also been competing in the road classes down south. Olivia! Olivia does a 38.99. 38.99. Which is actually under Nicholas Lap record. Hill record. 
Bristol. Elliot Olivia Cooper's 30.9. If that was a qualification competition run, that would have been a new ladies' record. Hope she can do it again this afternoon. The ladies' record is 39.35. Fantastic time there for Olivia Cooper. Darren Gumley, 38.91. So again, potential qualifiers to repeat this in the afternoon qualification runs. Richard Spedding showing purple now, up through Garnegie and Junction. And here we have Dave Warburton, who won the class yesterday. And will David time yesterday, 36.38 to win the class in qualifying. Again, this is only practice. 36.97 from from uh, Richard Spedding. Dave Wharton still purples. 117. Just catches the inside edge of the track at Junction, flying up the top of East Bray. Dave still running purples. So he's giving the 37s at 36s, I think. 36.45. Which again is very close to the new record he set yesterday, which is 36.38. There's a fantastic hook line there, and we're just in practice. Moving on to the next class, the two -hitter single seaters, Andrew Henson in the Dallara, modified by Gould. Sharing with Nicola Dearden. And it's probably Ian Tucker who is uh, a shady car with uh, Steve Owen today. Tucker followed up by another qualifier for yesterday, Jonathan Varley in the Predator. Jonathan finished ninth, finished ninth yesterday in the runoff. And this Predator produced up in Aberdeen by Graham White many years ago now. It's still a lovely modern looking racing car. Probably the best looking in the paddock, but then others will argue that point. But um, certainly Predator. Looking great, this blue, but a bit of matte black these days, and again, the truth of that I'll talk about later. The Jonathan Barley, 38.16. And Iron Price in the force. All these cars are potential qualifiers for the runoff. After the next car, after Iron Price, we've got Paul Hames. We'll leave the turbocharged Gould. Having a good run of form at the moment. He finished fifth yesterday in the, in the runoff. And he's about to leave the line in the turbocharged version of the Gould. Plain start away. So a time for Ireland Price of 39.61. So as I said, the top, the 12th qualifier yesterday was a 13.48. So there's going to be some exciting hill climbing this afternoon after lunch as these drivers try to qualify for the runoff. Paul Hames running himself in class this weekend in the top of force induction class. He did a 36.60 which is very close to Richard Spedding's record of 36.43. Paul Crew on the Paul Crew on the hill in the uh, OMS with the Jaguar, 3 the Jaguar engine. Paul not registered at the championship, so uh, won't qualify for runoff. Paul from way down in the southwest of England again. And now Will Hall in his new Gould GR59 for this year. 1.89 off the start. Will's always a really quick starter. 1.89 and running purple at the moment. Then he is only the second 
run away from the best class so far. And then we've got Trevor Willis on the Trevor shooting uh, Simon Andrews on S28. After his car developed an engine problem yesterday. Will Hall, top of the hill in practice, 35.94. 35.94. Trevor, yesterday, um, didn't get... Trevor didn't get below 40 yesterday. Tail sliding at the exit of Junction, pushing that car. Maybe harder than it's been before. 2.8 litre TKD. Engine at the back of it. And now Matthew Ryder. On the second equal in the championship in the Gould that he shares with Sean Gould so all these guys should be shooting qualifiers tomorrow in the afternoon the maths just uh, stalled the car on the line but uh, Oh no, Matt, Scott Moran stole the car on the line. Matt's near the top of the hill. So Matthew Ryder, 36.32. Scott Moran's just a stall there. They're going to restart it shortly. Yep, restart safely. So, uh, There you go, it's 2.09 start. And through the bottom of the hill here between the narrow, narrow track between the barriers. And a flash of an eye, a blink of an eye, Scott's the top of each gray in 26 seconds. And Alex Summers lead the lines, fastest qualifier yesterday. Then really caught the worst of the rainstorm yesterday afternoon and finished off in 11th position. A 35 4 8 for Scott. Yes, so. But Alex now setting red sector figures, which means the uh, the fastest time of the day so far in practice. And he'll be followed by Wallace Mingis. So Alex, a Thirty-five point oh eight. Fastest time we've seen so far today. Wallace, quick through the bottom, few corners, head towards Oak Tree. <laughs> Not as quick as Ali, still just running the yellow sectors at the moment. It's a bit of a twitch at the exit of the junction. He's not quite as quick as others at the moment. It'll be still be a 36 or 37, 36 I imagine, 30, 35, 35.87 Wallace. And now it comes down a little bit, that's the end of the, uh, the uh, large single seater class. So we split CM this afternoon, any of our qualifiers, and um, well a one time run, followed by a runoff. So Donald Laird near the top of the hill in this classic Eldon Mark 8. And his rival in that class is uh, Tom Wilson in the, uh, again, another classic, Mini Cooper S, rally prepared. A regular here on Scottish Hills. But the last car is the the Kohl Sherby not appeared. The last car is John Albertson's Brabham. This a uh, wonderful orange uh, Jagermeister sponsored homage to Graham Hill, who drove the car, a car, not this car, a similar car and a similar livery in, in time. John just acquired this car this year. It has a history in Scottish motor racing. It used to be dri dri driven by Stuart Robb 
um, circuit racing at Ingolston back in the 70s. So John Albertson takes that car up to the finish line, 48.87, 400 slower than he did yesterday. And that is the last car uh, we'll see this morning, and that uh, runs, and we are now stopping for lunch, and restarting again at at 12.30. To 12.30, we start for lunch with the second time run for the Scottish drivers, and the one and only time qualification run for the British the British Championship classes. So we'll see you back here at 12.30. And after those runs, uh, there'll be a third time run for the Scottish Championship classes. And then we'll have the runoff. So 12.30 for the start of this afternoon's events. We watch you online. I hope you you enjoyed that. Um, we'll now have a quiet period, obviously, until we uh, get the action restarted again. And we hope to see you back online at half past twelve.
about where the Scottish flag is, if you can see that. Very centre of the screen. It's all about where the graphic is. <laughs>
I've come down and everyone's on their laptops looking at data. And, uh,
Merci. Thank <laughs> you. 
World famous Rich Danby. Attention paddock, attention paddock. Any marshals requiring a lift up the hill? Transport is about to leave. Thank you. Okay, I'll wait for the cars to start to form within the paddock and then I'll come in.
So good afternoon everybody and welcome to Dune Hill Climb. Uh, some of you may just have arrived after uh, lunch. Others have been here all day. So uh, welcome both live here at Dune in the centre of Scotland and also online on the Hill Climb UK live stream. This is the uh, 14th round today of the British Hill Climb Championship sponsored by Avon Tyres and the 12th round of the British Hill Climb Cup sponsored by Footman James. We also have the Scottish Hill Climb Championship, the Lowland Speed Championship and the Highland Speed Championship and the Scottish Speed Championship. All comp competitors competing in some of those championships across the various classes we have here. Uh, the first cars will be coming up to the starting area shortly. I hope if you've been watching online, I hope you've been enjoying the uh, paddock walk by uh, Rich Danby, looking at the various cars and the preparation being done on them for this afternoon's runs. This afternoon the programme is as follows. We'll have uh, all of the entry going up. The Scottish Championship classes first of all, followed by the um, National Championship classes. And then the Scottish Championship classes will have another time run and then we'll have the top 12 runoff for the fastest 12 contenders registered for the British Championship. So that's this afternoon's schedule. We've had two practice runs this morning for the British Championship and one practice run for the Scottish Championship and one timed run for the Scottish Championship. So if you're new to hill climbing, the cars are divided to various classes. We have road going cars, uh, modified cars, sports levers, which are basically anything goes with uh, two seats and closed bodywork, and then single seaters from, uh, you see cars from up to 1100 all the way up to unlimited over two litres. Some cars will have double drivers, uh, in other words, they'll have two engines, two drivers will, will take the cars up the hill at different times, and the first batch of cars you'll see will include a number of cars running with a 7 in front of the name, other number. Uh, this usually indicates the second driver of the car, so the first car you'll see, for example, uh, will be 710, and that is Jody Gordon, who is a co-driver's father, Camel Gordon, who will see a later batch in 110. So we send cars up to the top in batches of up to 25 cars, and then when the paddock at the top of the hill is full, we bring them back down and send the next batch of cars up. And in total, we have a total of four batches today of cars, about 100 cars going up the hill one at a time. The first batch has it quite small with a double driver, um, but then four major batches after that. So I see we've had practice this morning, uh, and the fastest time in practice this morning was a uh, 
set by Alex Summers at 35.08 seconds. The program, if you've got one, the program will tell you that the hill record is 34.21, also set by Alex Summers. This meeting last year, and the latest hill record was set this meeting last year by Nicola Mingis. But without further ado, the first batch, the first car, the first batch is heading towards the line. And that's number 710. It's the first batch of cars. Is a, uh, so this Jody Gordon is in a Scottish Class A1. Won the class yesterday. And a set of time so far this morning of 53.48. On his first time run. So Jody leaves the line. He'll be followed by Malcolm McDonald in his Audi A4, Scottish Class A2. He's sharing with John Keane. Jody Gordon right through Oak Tree and up through Garden Gate towards the tunnel. And after the tunnel, they go into the open, uh, up towards Junction, where they head right across the meadow. Of course, flat is out a little bit. Across the meadow, uh, bearing radius corner, then up the two part of each bray, which is steeper than it looks on the screen. You have to go and really stand next to each bray to get a full idea of the gradient. And then through the edges of the top and up towards the finishing line. So the first competitive time this afternoon is Jody Gordon. It's a 53.43, which is five hundred quicker than his time on the first round on the hill, near the top, Malcolm McDonald in the Audi, and he's followed up by Alex Howells. Number seven, number seven eleven, Alex Howells in the Hillman Super Imp, and this is the Class A1 national round. So a mixture of cars for the Scottish and national classes at the moment, while we get these double drivers up the hill. So Malcolm McDonald's time is 63. 0 0.08, which is no better than this morning's time, so he will stay in third in that class at the moment. Alex Howells is sharing with uh, wife Jenny, who you'll see in a later batch. And now on the hill is Alan Nickel, National Championship Class B, uh, road going specialist production cars. Alex and Alan Nickel sharing with son Craig. Uh, Craig is running first in class after the first run. Yesterday after yesterday's run. So these cars in the national championship classes had one run yesterday. One qualification run. And this is their second run. But times in this run will count towards the class overall award. The best of the two runs between yesterday and today will count towards the class overall award. But each individual round counts for championship points. So after Alan Nicholl, who's uh, 47.08. Quicker, I was saying yesterday, but we'll see a new uh, championship run today. Alan Reid on the line. And up the hill, and he is in class C2. 1927cc Peugeot. Modified series production cars, and he's a time of 49.33. 49.33 for Alan Reed. And that's the end of that small batch of double driven cars. As I say, we had yesterday we had three rounds, three timed competition runs for the Scottish Championship runners, and this um, this morning we already had one timed run for the Scottish runners. The British runners had one run yesterday, qualification run for the runoff, and also point scoring run for the Cup, British Hill Climb Cup, which is a class-based championship. And then today we have a second 
competition run, which will be the qualification run for the top 12 runoff and a separate round of the British Open Cup. In the programme, it shows you which competitor is registered in which in which class, which, class? Uh, which championship rather, and, um, and um, the, some are registered some in both the cup and the championship, some in just one, some in just the other. And we've got people online streaming into Dune this weekend. Uh, the latest message is from Lee Corbett, a uh, well-known commentator down in Guernsey. And we've had greetings online yesterday from people in Maine, USA and Germany. Questionnaire online for what is the track record. The track record uh, is Alex Summers at 34.21. Question that came through online 34.2 is a track record. So these little small batch come down the hill, and the next batch of cars going up will be mainly the rest of the Scottish Championship classes. So back to A1, Scottish Championship class, we've already had Jody Gordon and Malcolm McDonald. So the next runner up would be Campbell Gordon. Um, but you know, give him time to change drivers, and the next car up will be 111, which is anti Reed. And probably the most standard car competing here this weekend is the Datsun Cherry 1270cc. And his first year of running his new claims. So he's lined up on the start line. Waiting for the signal to go, and he's off. So it's time just to, it's time this morning with a 66.96. To leave him third in class behind the Gordons. Uh, and Andrew's followed up by um, Brian Hunter. The next car up is the first of two red twingos we have here. This is a blue one. Brian was the class Brian leader in class, class A2. Class A2. With both Red and Twingos being quicker than the Audi A4, which is in the same class. So Brian Hunter is now left line in the blue Twingo. As Andrew Reid speeds across the meadow to the bottom of his prey. Brian Hunter's best time yesterday, or best time this morning, best time the weekend was 61.04. So anti rage is a 66.40. And we have two twingos on the hill because joining Brian Hunter's blue one, followed down the hill with Ian Crawford in the white one. And uh, Brian Hunter running the curves through the S's, taking the straightest line possible, trying to get below 60 perhaps. But it's a bit slower than he was this morning, 61.85 for Brian Hunter. David Reid leaves the line in the Subaru Impreza, car number 113. Quick drop in, uh, drop in time to 49.61 for David Reid this morning. To Ian Crawford in the white Twingo, near the top of the hill. Uh, David Reid storms up towards Junction. So Ian Crawford's time, 63.47. He does 62 this morning, so no improvement for, Dave, for uh, Ian. David Reid followed up by Callum Norris, no sign of June to Earth. Number 114 today. So just uh, David Reed in that class. So David Reed's 49.55. A slight improvement from this morning. Callum Norris in the Silver Riot. One later rear engine kit car. A couple of them here this weekend. You'll see a more modified one later. But Callum Norris near the top of East Bray while Sandy Reed leaves in an unusual two litre. Uh, C-Tech engine Luego Velocity. 
Uh, built in Aberdeenshire, this, this particular car, um, based on a low cost a low kit cost car. car. So, uh, a wow, car in the sort of Caterham Westfield, Westfield genre of uh, kit cars. A time for Callum Norris is a 54.18, 54.18, running by himself in that class, as if he's Sandy Reid in the over 1700 road sports cars. As indeed the next car in the hill, Neil Ross in the Porsche Boxster. So all these drivers just competing against the clock to try and improve their times. Sandy's first hill climb this weekend. He started off yesterday with a 66s and came down this morning to a 60.7. That is a 61.07. So I'll be pleased with those two times so far today. Neil Ross in the Porsche Boxster. Push the top of each break. Michael King leaves the line. The first four of our of our four Mazdas here this weekend. Four Mazda MX-5s. They have a separate class in the Scottish Mazda Championship. Very popular. Uh, and Neil Girdwood this morning set a new class record of 52.30. Mm. Neil Ross's time in the Porsche is a 56.39. Jim King kick up a lot of dust there. Or was that Michael King? That was Michael King kick up a lot of dust at the top of uh, East Bray. Jim King falls along the hill. And Michael King a 53.30. Running second in class, but that puts a full second behind Neil Girdwood from this morning's time. Jim King. Oh, another one throwing up a lot of dust at East Bray. So the marshals there, unfortunately, covered in the dust blowing across from the outside of East Bray. But Jim King's time is a 54.38. So we now have two other managers on the hill, Alan Cuthbert. And Neil Girdwood, the new record holder. Must be some dust on the track now, and uh, more dust at the S's for Alan Cuthbert. Very dry here. Neil Gerber through uh, junction. Alan Cuthbert, 58.88. And Neil Gerber sitting purple sectors, so fastest in class. And behind Neil is the Cab McGordon, the father of Jody Gordon, who was the first runner we saw. Neil Gerwood down down 51.82. Another new lap class record for Neil Gerwood, 51.82. So that's two records in his first two runs. And one more run to go. Back to class A1 is Campbell Gordon. In the family page of Jordan Campbell down from the very north of Scotland. Another car on the hill is John Keane in his Audi, where he shoots with Malcolm McDonald in class A2. So Campbell Gordon, 56.99. Which leaves him second in class behind his son Jody and on the hill John Keane. It's followed up by John Lowe. His Peugeot running in a class by himself, modified saloon. And then Kayla Sutherland in a GPS zero. To John Keane, 64.11. John's found out three seconds since yesterday. So he's obviously learning the hill in the car combination very well. John Lowe uh, near the top of the hill. John Low has time of 56.83, followed by Andrew Grove, Kenneth Sutherland, and then Andrew Grover in the silver, 
And the lookout for number 124, Colin Marshall, in his Nissan 2 litre, 3 litre turbo. Drift specification, this car. He says to try a hill climb for change. Kenneth Sullivan's time, Kenneth Sullivan, 53.70. Marshall's Del 3 Garden Gate come up the tunnel. More restrained than yesterday. He's found out this morning, I think, that uh, drifting the cars maybe not the quickest way up the hill. A bit less wheel spin, a bit more application of gentle power. He found a second and a half this morning. Time for Andrew Grover running in class B4 is a 45.83. David Colin Marshall. Uh, another improve, another two seconds is found. 52.80. Number 123, Matthew Price, a non starter. So after Colin Marshall, we've got Alex Hadlewood in the midget. midget. And Tom and Tom Kenny in an Alfa Romeo engine, Genetta G15. So this is a class D1 classic thoroughbred road cars. And Tom Kenny is followed up by Kieran Bailey. There's Lotus Seven. Now, Kieran held the lap record, the hill record, before the weekend, and since then he's broken it four, three times. So the program says 52.20, and his best time yesterday was 49.33. So a time for Alex Hazelwood, a midget of 69.79, 69.79, and for Tom Kenny, a 63.69. So what can Kieran, Kieran Bailey do? The British 48.33 record from yesterday. A lot of Wardles on the hill in her Porsche Carrera. Kieran Bailey a bit slower still, 49.91 for a second run, but he's got one more run to go. So this is the last two cars of this batch, two double drivers, Laura Wardle in the Porsche. It's followed by John McQuillan in the Fisher Fury. So Laura Wardle is in class. Um, C3 in the, the national round run, national championship classes, modified series production over two litres, and John McQuillan is sports labours up to two litres. These double drivers in those classes, and their co drivers will get a run in the next batch. So, a lot of water the top of the hill 58.88. It was a good second improvement on our time in qualifying yesterday. And uh, Jonathan Williamson, uh, sorry, John McQuillan. Uh, in a cl class of six sports Libre cars. Uh, and he's over the line in 53.85. And just marshal out, do a bit of sweeping, I think, and a bit of checking the track at the top of each spray. There is a time for John McCullough, just confirm that time for John McCullough, 53.85. Play here of uh, the Michael King Mazda at the top of his way. Yes, he went all oh, right into the, the, the gutter on the outside there. So I was lucky to get away with that and still keep going in a straight line towards the finish. And following up the second, the next, next Mazda 
similar kind of thing, into the rear wheel, into the gutter. So two of them in a row, father and son, or son and father, um, having a little bit of a flirt with the, uh, the dust on the outside of East Bray. Okay, so at the end of the uh, Scottish Championship classes, we can look at the positions in the class today. So in class A1, is Jody Gordon leading the way on a 53.43 from Father, Ca Father Campbell on a 56.99 and then Andrew Reid a 66.40 in the Datsun. In Class A2 is Brian Hunter, his first run time of 61.04, leading away from Ian Crawford and Ella Twingle, 62.49, and Malcolm McDonald and John Keane in the Audi, 62.67 and 64.11. So Malcolm McDonald getting quite close to Ian Crawford in the Twingle. We'll see how it goes in their third run. Over two litres, David Reid running himself today. Uh, and in the road sports car up to 1400, Callum Norris running himself, so he's just got the road times to beat. Over 1700, Sandy Reid in the Lego, bringing his times down steadily to the 60.74. And uh, Mark Road sports cars, Neil Ross in the Porsche 56.39, his best run. The Mazda class, uh, led by Neil Godwood, with a 51.82. From Michael King 53.3 and Jim King 54.38, Alan Cuthbert in fourth 57.55. John Lowe on himself in modified saloons, as is Andrew Grover in the modified sports cars. As is Kenneth Sullivan in the bigger engine modified sports cars, and Callum Marshall in the sports levers. To that drift specification Nissan. Uh, less drifting, more gentle application, and he's got his times down to 52.8. That's a two second improvement from this morning, and a four second improvement from yesterday. And then the thoroughbred cars, led by Kieran Bailey, 49.91, from Tom Kerry, 63.69, and Alex Hazelwood, 67.49. So that's all the Scottish runner classes have been through their second class runs, they'll have one more class run after this session. So, down on to the British Championship classes and we're back to class A1. And our first run is Jenny Howells in the Family Imp. One time so far in this class, that was at Alex Hills, a 65.84. So Jane Hills in the same car, the Hillman Imp. The loyal, loyal supporters of Dune Hill Climb from Limington in the south coast of England. And we've got a bit of an English Scottish battle in this class between um, James Hudson, number 16, and Derek Rothley, number 18. More about that shortly. Falling, Alec. Falling, uh, Jenny Hills in the classic Hillman Imp. We got John Hamilton in a classic Rover Mini. So Jenny Hills on the top of East Bray as John Hamilton runs up through Garden Gate towards Tunnel. A 
time for Jenny Howells of 62.23. Uh, John Hamilton, Mini followed by a Ford Fiesta, Craig Dow. Then the uh, golf of, ch of class record holder, James Hudson. He's a new record yesterday, 50.30. Time for John Hamilton. A good improvement from yesterday, 64.51. I see James Hudson in the golf look out for this golf uh, say 50.3 here yesterday despite just flipping the bar at the top of the hill he's up through a tunnel to a quite exciting through a junction and across the meadow and bottom of his way indicator on but he's going straight up the hill very nicely through a uh, junction look at the bottom of his brain he's followed by John Langmaid who a spin yesterday oh James is off at the top of his break, into the into the groove. So that's lost a bit of time. I'm sure John Langmaid, great rival of James from down south. James has 51 0 seconds exactly. So he's lost a bit of time there, but he could still win the class with that. We'll wait and see what John Langmaid and Derek Rothney can do. Craig Dow's time, by the way, was 57.36. So John Langmaid doing well in the British Hill Climb Cup. Derek Rothley set a 50.22 in early practice today. John Langman 50.05. That is a new record. A great run there from John. John Langman 50.05. That gives him an extra point in the British All Time Cup. And it looks like he might win the class and let Derek Rothley can possibly get into the 49s. He's certainly trying his red, red through, through junction. So fastest time of the day so far. We're going quicker than John at the moment. Can he keep that going to the top of the hill? Uh, yes, he's uh, safely through East Bray, so Dave Rossi on a charge here on a mission. He's going quicker, going quicker. than Lang Mead at the moment. It's a 49.97 for Dave Rossi. 49.97, that's a sub 50 in that class, and that must be the first time ever. In that class of some 50 seconds. So Derek Rothley wins the cross border battle, but just by eight hundredths of a second from John Langmaid. It's a super dive from Derek Rothley there. Now in the hill, Rodney Isles near the top of the hill, and it's not a Honda, it's an Alfa Romeo today, not his Honda. This is a 52.53. He's found four seconds since yesterday, and he has to because Robbie Biddle did a 49 yesterday. So what can Robbie Biddle set a new class record yesterday? So can Robbie Biddle do another record today? He was running a bit wide at the last corner. I can't see if he hit the barrier or not. He just ran into the gutter at the last corner. But he's still going. going. 49-4-1 for Robbie Biddle. Yes, he can do another record. So there's two class records in three runs there. Dave Rothley and Robbie Biddle. So... Right, breath, hold the breath. Class B, Tim Higgins, Westfield, followed by John Pick in the Subaru engine four wheel drive AMS or tyre. Uh, but the car to fall, watch in this class will be the next one up, number 23, Craig Nickel in the Caterham Super 7. Class record holder, but a 43.5 now, a couple of seconds quicker than I managed this weekend, so see if you can get down to anywhere near that 43 second. Time for Tim Higgins, 60.22. And John Pick near the top as Craig Nickel goes up through Tunnel. John Pick's time, 51.73. Most of these cars show a couple of seconds improvement since yesterday, so I guess the track is quicker today than it was yesterday. Craig Nickel flying up over East Bray is followed by Eric Moray. Eric Morin is turbocharged Hillman Imp. Unfortunately running in the class by himself. Craig Nichols time 45.24. So quicker than yesterday, but still well short of his record, which was set nine years ago now. So 
Any morning the tucker charged him. And followed by Ross Sullivan the GPS zero. Uh, Eric <laughs> flinging it through the top of his prey. As him shooting long and they're quite wide at the last corner, quite tight at the last corner, close to the barrier. First one point nine for Eric. Again a lot quicker than yesterday. And quite a second near second just a second off the record. Ross Sutherland in the GBS zero running in class C2. With one run time so far, 49.33 from Alan Reed. So what can Ross Sutherland do? It's a 49.73. There's a slight patch of oil. Uh, and the lead up to the start line, just been covered by the marshals with some soaked up paper, yep. Oil or water perhaps, just a little puddle. Because the next car on the line is James Clark. Now we didn't see, it's not James Clark, we don't see James Clark. It should be James Clark, but James had an issue with his car in his last run this morning, his last practice run. So it's uh, Jock Ramsey in the Opel Manta coming up to the line. Jock Ramsey, uh, well known here at Dune, looks after the verges and the, will hopefully not be chewing them up in his lovely Opel Manta, well known car here in Scotland and the north of England. Jock was third in class yesterday behind the next two cars to follow. Fourteen fifty-one yesterday, Jock. So we're looking for another forty-nine today. Especially as Alan Reed got fourteen thirty-three earlier to push Jock down to fourth overall over the two days. So Cooper fourteen from Jock is through the edge of forty point four. That's a forty-nine point oh five for Jock Ramsey. Stu Reed. Last record holder set the record here last year at this very meeting. Father laid down a 14.33. What can Stuart do? Avoids all the traps at East Bray. Middle of the road through the last corner. Is that first 46? There's a 46.13, so uh, still leads the class to just inside the record. David Patterson in his 106 pressure, slightly smaller engine. Compared to the Reed car, 1700 cc's. Second in class yesterday, and still running second overall. Over the two days, body flapping a little bit in the car as he goes through last bend. Heading up towards the line in a 47.77. And now we're into class C3 for the modified production over two litres. We've uh, seen Laura Wardle in the Porsche. This is our co-driver, Jonathan Williamson. And he's followed by Jeff Tremlow, who won the clash yesterday. Jeff all the way down, from, all the way up from Cornwall. In this uh, Subaru Impreza so he's had for a number of years. Jonathan Williamson, 53.29, leads the class. Uh, and leads overall the two days. So Jeff needs to find some improvement and he's actually purple sectors all the way up the top so he could be quicker than Jonathan this run. Uh, he's lost some time there up to the S's. So it looks like though Jeff a bit of an issue. But still going to be a good time, still a, yeah, it's a 53.88. So just loses out there to Jonathan Williamson. Andrew Norris, a newcomer to, uh, to Dune. Lives near Shelsey Walsh in Worcestershire. Very near to Shelsey Walsh in Worcestershire, about a mile, I believe. It's first was up here to Dune. And getting better every run. He's the last one in this class. So the C3 class currently led by Jonathan Williams at 53.29. Andrew Ward nearly 53.47, so very close there. 
but it does mean the Jeff Tremors drop down to third place. On to Class D for specialist production cars, with a couple of entries here. Stuart Dow, 44.94 for Stuart Dow. And then we're on to um, Melvin, Mike West, who's on to Class F, just jumped the car to Class D, that was Stuart Dow, 44.94. Class F, Mike West. Seen as a co-driver, John McQuillan to a 53 to pass Mike in the overall weekend standings. So what can Mike do? The car seems to have found a lot of speed since yesterday. 53.42 for Mike West, just pips his core driver. But the other cars this class will be calling the shots. Melvin Hartley, Class D, up against Stuart Dow in the Westfield Mega Boots, a 1300cc engine. Not a 1600 as the programme says, 1300. And followed by John Ramsey in a much modified Vauxhall Nova, running in Sports Labour. So, Melvin Hartley near the top of the hill. John Ramsey halfway up, and Richard Matossian on the line in this OMS SC1. So, the next three cars, purebred. Cars and Melvin Hartley 53.01 and So John Ram's having an issue up the hill there, so we'll wait to see what the problem is there. So the rescue vehicle going up to judge the situation with John Ramsey and his car. And also Clark of the course, Tim Thompson going up in his white foxhole. So a bit of a break there. Well, we sort this issue out. The marshal's sweeping uh, near Oak Tree. So maybe a, a little nudge of the barrier from John Ramsey as he went through Oak Tree. But let's reflect there on the uh, last few minutes. So we've had a, a new hill record, a new class record from Jonathan Langmead in the Lotus Elise, quickly eclipsed just one run later by Derek Rothley in his Clio to a 49.97 in class A1 and win the class. And then in class A2, another class record from Robbie Burrell, uh, taking two tenths off the one he set yesterday. It's now 
So uh, watching online, we've got uh, messages coming through from all over the world. We've got one here from Dunkirk in Maryland, the USA. From Mac B. Thank you for the awesome hill, live hill climb competition. And now when I'm near, nearer to home, Hatton Aberdeenshire for Absolute Motorsport and Dunbar Tune. So we're glad we're reaching out to people across the world with the uh, action here from Dune. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, Darren Gumbel can hear this, but a shout out to Darren because it's Father's Day. He's a total legend and he's been supported and watching the live stream from Split in Croatia. Love Grace. I hope Darren can hear that. If any of the party can tell him, he's been messaged by Grace from Split in Croatia. Happy Father's Day, Darren. Okay, um, so we've got this red flag on the hill while we deal with John Ramsey. But driver's okay, but we think the car's hit the barrier. So we a slight break where we get, get that um, action, uh, that um, activity finished. Motorsport UK TV, the home of unmissable British motorsport videos. <music> Bringing you all the action from the British Championships. Taking you behind the scenes giving you top tips to succeed in every discipline. Showcasing the best equipment. And much, much more. Visit motorsportuk.tv today and make sure you never miss a moment.
Uh, public service announcement. Apparently, there is a dog in the hill uh, in spectator areas. Unfortunately, we're not allowed to have dogs on the hill here at the hill climb. So, could you take your dog back to the car uh, or leave it somewhere safe away from the hill climb area? That's a dog on the hill. We don't allow dogs here at the hill climb. So, please remove your dog from the hill climb spectator areas. Thank you. So that was uh, John Ramsey's car coming back uh, on all four wheels. So uh, he did hit the barrier, uh, but a part of the car is oh, still running okay. Obviously, it's a failed run for John. And uh, we're back in action very, very shortly. So just a view from, view from the paddock there of uh, Bridge Dabby Water in the paddock, looking at cars that are about to come up. See Alan McDonald, Al McDonald there, but here's Richard McCott Matossian coming to the line in the OMS SC1. And if I he'll be followed up by uh, by James Clark, who I thought wasn't taking a run, but uh, James was just having a little overflow problem in the paddock. And he will be coming to take his run. So Richard McTossian leaves the line in the OMS in class F. Was third in class yesterday but uh, actually faster to the class runners in practice this morning. So there's three cars coming up, Richard McTossian followed by James Clark, but after that, there were two more of his four Lever cars. So James Clark running class for the back of the modified series production cars, class C3, not the same class as the car in front of him or the car behind him. So Richard McTossian over the line, 43.29. That's a good time compared to, again, another second a bit compared to yesterday. After James Clark with Brian Beverly in his Westfield. So James Clark had an issue on his practice run this morning and then had an overflow, fuel overflow issue, we think, in the run up to the line a few minutes ago. On the hill up towards junction as Brian Beverly leaves the line in the Westfield. Brian Beverly, the class record holder in this class, and a much uh, modified vision way back in 1998. So 25 years ago, Brian Beverly set the class record. A sports racing vision, which was a circuit racing car. Time for James Clark is 58.97 as Brian Beverly leaves the line. Alan McDonald coming up away from the line as well in his fourth SR4. So Beverly Westfield near the top, 44.18. So can McDonald get into 43s? Get off the line, but a bit slow up the junction. 1300 supercharged car, Alan McDonald, who you may have seen in years gone past, in the Mini Evo. Also, a uh, Manx Grand Prix winner and TT competitor in his younger days on his motorcycles. Alan McDonald, 44.42, so not quite, he'll finish third in class. Ben Hamer off the line, this is the start of the single seater double driven cars. Ben Hamer, share with brother Will Kerr. This is a 748 turbocharged Kawasaki engine car. The only uh, turbocharged and only non-Suzuki in this class of 20 cars. So Ben Hamer double driven with uh, Will Kerr. You'll see later Ben over the line shortly. And a 42.83. So um, that was uh, Jonathan Fletcher leaving the line. See if he can get to the top this time because he had a few fuel issues with the car. Late yesterday and earlier today, Jonathan shared with son Dylan. First year in the car. And going to a spray and at least go get to the top this time. So 
Jonathan's at 43.10 for Jonathan. Followed by Richard Weaver in the Empire. These are the double driven cars in the 1100cc class. So, uh, winners yesterday, Dave Tatum qualified for the top 12 runoff. Can you do the same again today? Richard Weaver, followed up by Richard Summers in the family DJ Firehawk. Richard Shearman with daughter and Lord Debbie. And being followed up the hill by wife Lindsay in the Van Diemen Formula Ford car. So uh, Richard Weaver's son Tom will come over to be at 44.23. And Lindsay leaves the line in the Van Diemen. So Richard Summers is at 43.03. And Lindsay Summers is the last car in this batch. We'll have to wish we'll get the cars back down for the last couple of sports cars and the smaller engine single seaters. So Lindsay Summers heading up through over East Bray. Um, just slightly slower than, slower than Sarah Bond was yesterday. Who she shares a car with, and Lindsay at the top of the hill in a 53.38. And that's the end of that batch. In theory, we've had the first qualification times for the top 12 runoff later, but really nothing above 40 seconds will probably qualify. So, 40 seconds is the time to aim for if you want to. Have a chance of qualifying, we think, to the top 12. I said 12 qualifier yesterday was 39.48, but the hill seems to be quicker today, looking at practice times. So maybe you need to be in the 39s or even the 38s to qualify. We will soon find out. So uh, again, looking online, we've got a message from Germany from Armin Westenhofer. Uh, hello, Armin, from us here in Scotland, and also all British Hill Climb fans. So you see the cars here lining off the next batch. The two sports cars at the front, very interesting. Both French, built, both running Japanese Honda engines. One is the Ligier GS53, a new car to David Seaton this year. And behind that is the uh, Norma of Duncan Barnes. David's running a normally aspirated Honda and Duncan a turbocharged Honda engine. Duncan doing the whole of the British Hill Climb Cup this year and currently leading the way. Then behind them, uh, behind Duncan's sing uh, two-seater, two is the red single-seater of Rudy Seaton, David's son in his mega pin and the cars in the foreground a uh, couple of Scottish Hill Climbers 59 there's Leslie Sheridan and her Raynard 903 and Charlie Fraser his self-built 130R so the area you can see behind the cars is the grassy area that's where the double driven cars come in to change drivers so um, they uh, come in there do a quick swap of whatever needs to be swapped Seat belts, seats sometimes, um, depending how different the, con different the sizes of the drivers are. Um, readjust the seat belts, put in different seats, seat rubber, seat, seat, seat foam, padding, etc. Yeah, so David Seaton uh, had a, a pull beam, a large BMW engine pull beam for a good number of years. That car actually was 40 years old. Still looked very modern, but um, he's been trying to sell it for a number of years and acquired this lovely Ligier quite recently. 
and now he's just getting used to it. He found a couple of seconds this morning from yesterday. So he should be close enough to Duncan to give him a good challenge for the class win. But then Duncan himself found some time this morning as well. So the car's coming down off East Bray, down towards the bottom of the hill. Going back to uh, the uh, classes, I'm not sure if we're giving you actual uh, positions in the classes. In A1, I, just, I think it was doing this from Derek Roth at 49.97, John Langwood at 50.05, and then James Hudson today at 51 seconds exactly. But he was at 50.3 yesterday, gives him third in class overall the weekend. In A2, Robbie Burrell, a new class record. Yesterday, another new class record today. 14.41 against Rodney Isles in the Alpha Romeo, 52.53. Class B, Craig Nickel, 45.24. Leeds Father Allen, 47.08. Today, and off all four times today, quicker than yesterday's. C1 Eric Mori, 14.9, running by himself. Again, two and a half seconds quicker than he was yesterday. C2 modified cars, Stu Reid. Again, all these runs were quicker than yesterday's times. Stu Reid, 46.13. David Patterson, 47.77. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm in practice here, I'm sorry. No, I'm not, I'm in, in run. Jock Ramsey, of course. That, it says John Ramsey, it's Jock Ramsey, of course. Jock Ramsey, 14.05. So Stu Reid, 46.13. David Patterson, 47.77. Jock Ramsey, 14.05. Modified cars, over two litres, won eventually after a tough battle by Jonathan Williamson, 53.29, Andrew Norris, 53.47, and today it was Jeff Trello, 53.88, but his class winning day from yesterday was better, but he still finished in the third position overall. Modified production, Stuart Dow wins that quite easily from Melvin Hartley, a 44.94, to Melvin's 53.01. And the smallest four Lieber cars. Richard Tossi wins the class, 43.29. From Brian Beverly, 44.18. And Al McDonald, 44.42. Again, all completed runs today, quicker than yesterday's runs. And that's where we are so far in the classes. So, uh, heading into batch number three now. Headed up by the... Uh, by the Big sports lever cars and then the small single seaters. Message online there from the office staff at the office at Gurston Down Hill Climb down there in Wiltshire, where um, Jay Storman will be holding the fort on the commentary while I am um, up here at Dune. Um, so, ruptured duck motorsport in Gurston Down office. Dune looking amazing and looking out for Duncan and his Norma. So, thank you for that message from Gurston and hope Gurston's going okay. And it was a bit wet to start the day yesterday. Another two-day meeting down, down there for the mainly the local Southwest Championship classes and a number of selected guest clubs as well. But uh, very congested timetable at times. The uh, calendar, the times the hill climb calendar. These uh, British hill climb runs come rounds come quick and fast. This is a uh, the third one in four weeks. We had Gurston down three weeks ago, Shells of Wash two weeks ago, 
And then last weekend, if you wanted to, you could have gone to Lowton Park before um, this weekend here at Dune. But actually, I think next weekend is a bit of a quiet weekend on the hill climb scene before Harewood in two weeks' time. So Douglas Thompson there in the middle of the picture. Give a wave to the world, Douglas. <laughs> Douglas holds the battery for David Seaton. Has had a tryout in the Ligier. Shared the pilbury with David in the latter years and uh, now uh, had a, an outing in the Ligier at Kames when David was trying the car out and David now moving out of out of picture up towards the start line. Now these uh, cars like Ligier, the Ligier and the Norm are very popular in hill climbs on the continent where the hills tend to be longer and sports cars seem to do a lot better over there than they do over here. So David's off the line, distinctive yellow helmet. Followed by the popping and banging Duncan Barnes. <laughs> we'll leave us shortly. So Duncan ran this car with a two liter normally aspirated Honda. And then last year moved up to the turbocharged version and doing a full season. Having sorted out last year doing a full season this year in the cup. David nearly at the finishing line now. 46.82, he's definitely getting to know this car. That's three and a half seconds quicker than his qualifying run yesterday. So he's getting close to Duncan Barr's time. So Duncan was a 45.72 yesterday. But he's showing purple sectors all the way at the moment, so he is going quicker than David. Up to Junction and maybe to Dog East Bray. And he's quick out through the S's as well, so Duncan looks like to be sub 46 seconds here. 44, sub 45, 44.85 for Duncan Barnes. 44.85. Rudy Seaton in the Megafin. Set Rudy's second year in this car. Previous to that, yeah, he'll climb a Suzuki, a Swift, for a year, and then moved up to this mega pin. Mega pin created many years ago by Ian Scott, and there was another one in the class, but I don't see him. It should be Tom Graham next, but there's no sign of Tom. And it's Colin Graham coming up the hill. So, um, Tom failing to appear for this one. And he's 57, Colin. We actually had a spin in practice this morning. So Colin Green, 45.76. Leslie Sheridan on the hill, followed by Charlie Forsyth. Leslie in this uh, modified Reynard circuit racing Formula 3 car. And Charlie is 130R. There's a 45.56 for Leslie Sheridan. 45.56. Again, much quicker than yesterday. Charlie for size followed up the hill by the only Jedi we have here this weekend. Stuart Bayless in his Jedi Mark IV. Charlie his eyes 44.32. Stuart Bayless. And we seem to be missing another couple of cars, but they're probably just changing drivers. No, Marsh Lanker is missing. Oh, and Stuart Bayless very wide. Going into the last corner. I'm not sure if you hit the bar, you certainly hinted in the in the gutter and, and the red flag, so I think he must have gone off at the top there. Yes, he went slid wide, 
the camera showed him sliding towards the barrier and then disappeared out left of screen so I think he must have spun off at the top of the hill so Will Kerr get a red flag will be called back so I think it's just maybe a harmless spin and if that's the case can we send them back down but then we'll have to move Will Kerr out of the way so Will Kerr being told to run up presumably to a junction do a turn round while Stuart Bills will then hopefully if he's undamaged there's no barriers if he spins the outside of the corner up the top of the hill in the last corner the outside of the corner there's no barriers so he should have just maybe spun into the grass but he said he came very close to the camera wiping out the camera there at the top of the in the last corner oh, there he is on camera now Stuart Bills yeah, he's pointing in the right direction Four wheels seem to do okay, or maybe not. Hello. There's some a bit of struggle with the car here. Maybe they've got a, an issue with it. They're suddenly pushing it back a bit. Uh, I don't know what they're doing with it. They seem to they, they seem to be turning it around at the moment to send it back up again. Hmm. So there's a replay on screen of Stewart coming into the corner here. Just clips the curb in the last part of the S and then the back end swings out. I don't know if he hit the barrier with the back wheel or not. Um, they said we're turning it around, maybe it can run down on its own accord. Maybe it has been just bent, but um, they've turned Stuart Bailey's round, nearly. The car looks okay, but who knows? Again, as usual, these cars are fairly tight. Uh, the car is now heading, pointing up towards the finish, and the marshals, marshals, the car's up towards the finish, and the marshals sweeping away. Meanwhile, Will Kerr's gone back down to the bottom and has appeared beside me at the start line here. And we'll quickly turn him around and get him back on the line for his run. So, a failed run there for uh, Sure Bayless. So, we, see, we haven't seen a, a missed time of Rory Seaton's time, was 48.45. So Stuart Bales is a mistake they'll be shown again on replay on the screen, so maybe on YouTube forever now, Stuart. Back live now and uh It's Mark Schlanker on the line. Will carry push back a little, maybe needs a bit more fuel. Mark Schlanker on the line of the force, number sixty-two. And it's Force HC. Tenth in crash yesterday at 45.5. So you see, we haven't seen uh, Tom Graham this, this run. So, Mark Schlanker heading up to Doors Junction. Give an idea, he's doing 93 mile per hour through Junction there. Oh, the speed trap just before junction. Uh, Marsh Lanker is followed up by, by Debbie Summers. Debbie's red, red numbers for Debbie at the moment, which is the uh, fastest time of the day so far. But he's out to purple at junction, so lost a little bit. I know she's got fastest time so far. It must be. Uh, I'm actually, sure who's fastest time overall, but Debbie's uh, again showing red numbers, so. Is she heading for a qualifying time? Heading up towards the low 39. 39.80 for Debbie Summers. 39.80 for Debbie Summers. Only half a second away from the outright ladies' hill record. Marsh Lanker's time of the way was 44.02. So Nigel Pitt. 
Men det var MS. And we've got another red flag on the hill. Will Kerr's been red. Sorry, Tom, Tom Weaver there. Just got a little bit of confusion on the screen, they're showing red flag on the hill, but obviously that's not the case. Tom Weaver, 39.67 for Tom Weaver, 39.67. Nigel Pitt's time was 43.66. Nigel Pitt's time was 43.66. Gary Warren having a sighting run here. He did a 40 seconds and uh, was, yes, he was second in class. He won't qualify, he's not a registered contender of the championship. 39, 39.45 for Gary Warren. He's put him at the top of the class at the moment. So that's 300 ahead of Dave Tatum's time from yesterday. So Dave will have to get a, a better time than yesterday to dump the class. Gavin McLaren, who was a bit slower than the ones we've just seen. So on reflection there, Debbie Summers is 13.80. Tom Weaver, 13.67. Gary Warren, 13.45. But look out for Stuart Bickley, the bright yellow, fluorescent yellow Force TA. A new car to Stuart this year. Fourth in class yesterday, Gavin McLaren, 46.01. Sure, Bickley yeah, is sitting red team through Green Garden Gate. Been doing the puff at Junction. Will Kerr after Stuart Bickley. He was flagged earlier, you remember, so he's uh, getting a rerun. Stuart Bickley's time 39.05 for Stuart Bickley. Can he qualify for the runoff? Will Kerr on his way. Following the uniform of Dave Tate and class winner yesterday. Qualifier for the runoff yesterday. You need probably to get to 38 to qualify today and to also win the class today. <gasps> Will Kerr um, runs the, uh, the, the guster on the outside of East Bray. Have to think of a name for that. 40.57 for Will Kerr. 40.57. That's a good time for Will. 40.57. Dave Tatham is away. So there's a red, red sector through Garden Gate. And the red sector up through Junction, 107 miles per hour. And he keeps going, could be a 38 for Dave if he does. A lot of quick driver and really improved this year. The DJ, still in red sector, up towards the top of the hill. And Dave Tatham is a 38.34 for Dave Tatham. 38.34, not that far away from Robert Kenrick's class record. Dylan Fletcher, last car in this class. What can he do to follow his 38s and 39s? Yeah, Dylan didn't get recorded time yesterday. Ah, oh, loves it, lock on the top of his play. He's really pushing this through the hill. Round the top S, can he get to below 40? Age of 40, exactly. 40 seconds exactly for Dylan Flesher. Which only leaves him in sixth position. So Sarah Bosworth on the hill in the Formula Ford Van Diemen. To complete that class, and he's followed up by Liam Cooper in the Force TA. Forest Junction followed by Steve Marr shooting Sp Richard Spinney's Raptor. 
Steve didn't get a time yesterday, he did have a run, but uh, having a run today, Steve shared a lot of Raptors in the past with various people. And it's also his own uh, PTD Saxon in the past. Liam Cooper, 40.38. and shared the car with uh, son David behind Steve Marshy Mars over East Grey Nathan Jennings is warming the car up for Richard Spedding making sure everything's working okay as well as trying to get his own time down 40.97 for Steve Mars 40.97 Alan, Alan Warburton shared with son David running number 9 uh, Alan 709 uh, qualified a runoff recently at Gersten Down. And Alan's followed by Dave Uren. Oh, Dave Uren. Almost sideways through the first corner. Dave Uren. And Darren Gummis forced TA. His own, his own gold un, unusable this weekend because of a gearbox issue. So he's moved down from the bigger class to. Uh, the smaller engine force TA of Darren Gumbley. Gave it quick, it was in the 38s in practice. And could he qualify in this car? Time for Alan Warburton, but it was 39.87. Time for Darren Gumbley. Or Dave Uren. Dave Uren, 39.64. Dave Uren, 39.64. Now Nicola Deirdre on the hill in the Dallara before we have the first of the big engine cars Sean Gould in the double driven Gould Judd so Nicola over the top of East Bray heading towards Nicola Deirdre in the sense towards the S's at the top of the hill while Sean Gould is on the line and he's off the line in the four wheel four litre Gould Dave Uren, 64 foot time is 1.96. It was 109 through the speed trap. Dave Uren is 600 cc car. Sean Gould, not surprisingly, showing red sectors all the way up the hill. He will be the quickest car to date. And we can expect something in the 36s. He keeps it in the middle of the track. <laughs> He's pushing that up towards the finish line. There's a 36.62 for Sean Gould. We should qualify him for the runoff. Simon Andrews on the hill. Simon is sharing the car this meeting with um, Trevor Willis, whose uh, car had a problem yesterday in the engine compartment. So Simon Andrews. In the car. He normally shares it with Bernard Kevill. Bernard wasn't coming here this weekend anyway. And Simon was sharing it with um, Steve Owen. But then when Trevor's car failed, Steve transferred to Ian Tucker's car. And um, Trevor's sharing with Simon Andrews. And the time for Simon Andrews there of 43.41. It's the replay there of Darren Gumley going through the first corner. Uh, sorry, Dave Ewing goes through the first corner and Darren Gumley's car. Um, I hope Darren didn't see that. Uh, <laughs> but Darren himself, Darren himself had been pushed by Dave Ewing. Darren set the personal best in practice this morning in that car on the on the hill. So uh, sometimes it's good to have another driver in the car with you to identify issues you may not have noticed yourself. So obviously... Uh, Now we're getting down to the business end of this qualification runs. And let's go back and look at the sport labours over two litres was won by Duncan Barnes at 44.85. David Steeton at 46.82. Race cars up to 1100. Well, yesterday um, the winning time in the class was 13.48. Today that would only cost you fourth position because leading the way at a 38.34 was Dave Tatham. 
In second place, Stuart Bickley, 39.05 on his first visit to Dune. Third place, local man Gary Warren, 39.45. The Gary is not registered for the championship, uh, so he won't be able to qualify for the runoff. Fourth place, Tom Weaver, 13.67. Fifth, Debbie Summers, 13.80. Sixth, Dylan Fletcher, 40.0. And then seventh, Will Kerr, 40.57. So some of those cars, maybe the top one or two, may qualify for the runoff. We'll have to wait to see what the next two classes bring us because we've got some really quick cars coming up in this next couple of classes. For the fourth class was done by Steer of Bosworth at 50.69 from Lindsay Summer 53.38. The um, 600cc class at the moment is led by uh, Dan Gump, uh, sorry, by Dave Juren, on a 39.64. From Alan Warburton, to 13.87, so uh, can either of those two qualify? So we come in that class, we've still got come, we've got uh, Darren Gumbley, Olivia Cooper, um, Simon Mackay, Stuart Shogden, Dave Warburton, Richard Spreading, all potential qualifiers. And then we've got in the Joseph Varley, Iron and Price, Paul Ames, Will Hall, Matthew Ranger, Trevor Willis, Scott Moran, Alex Summers, Willis, Mingy. So still a whole host of cars who qualify for the runoff. So um, as I said, uh, even the uh, the 38.34 of Dave Tater might not be enough today to qualify. Picture there online, streaming online. We've got a picture of um, Andy Short up from the south of England for his first visit here to Doon. It's OMS. And he's been followed by, unfortunately, Alex Coles and Neil Coles' car, uh, Blue's engine, had an engine problem yesterday. So, no Alex Coles today. So, Andy Short followed up by the first of our two Scottish Raptors, a Simon Mackay in his Generation 2 Raptor. Number four is Stuart Stockton, number 10, 10th in championship last year, and his GWR Raptor. Simon qualified for the runoff yesterday, and weather conditions were such that he finished in third position. He was lucky to get a drier run in, but a very impressive time nonetheless to uh, get that third position. Stuart's time in the runoff was a 36.76. Um, which is uh, very close to the new record which was set yesterday. Dave Warburton set a new class record yesterday. Took two hundredths off Sean Gould's record, 36.38, and qualified in second position, but unfortunately hit the worst of the rain and was unable to score any points. So he'll be looking to repeat the qualification run and hopefully re hoping that the weather stayed better than it did yesterday. So you see the background in the picture there, um, online the cars single-seater cars coming down having their driver changeover taking place. Uh, Andrew Henson, Nicola Dearden in the front and then behind that we've got Dave Jaren, Darren Gumbley, the Warburtons, Spedding and uh, Steve Marr and then the Coopers at the end. And behind that, uh, the car behind the lineup of the oh, nearly all white and silver car, the car behind number 7055 of Matt Ryder just standing around waiting to get into the car and uh, Sean Gould having done his run. In the 1100 CT class, I mean, Robert Kenrick four years ago, 2019, 
was winning classes and setting records everywhere he went. And the record for the class is 37.76, which we thought at the time was pretty amazing, but Dave, Dave, Dave Tatham, they're down to 38.34. So not that far away. Hear the noise there of Andy Short coming to the line in his uh, OMS, ready to take his run up the hill. Short finished ninth in class yesterday with a 45.21. So he's getting first visit to Dune, improving all the time. Can he get into the 44s? Or even better. Even better, 42.55 for Andy Short. Now we've got um, Simon Mackay. Simon Mackay and his Raptor. Made a slight mess of his qualification on yesterday. Ran very, always oh, very close to Barry on the outside of the first corner. Safe to through Oak Tree though. He made a slight mess of East Bray yesterday and failed to qualify. And he's looking 100 and 108 miles per hour. 108 miles per hour through. Uh, the speed up up towards Junction and still quick go through Junction and through the S's so this is a quick run from Simon so a 30 37.74 Simon Mackay so Stuart Stogden up behind him so he's sent purple betting sent purple records here Stuart Stogden Watch the, watch the next car after Sure Shugged as well, because this is Olivia Cooper in the Force TA, former, former ladies record holder, and this morning in practice she set a time beneath the current ladies record. The current ladies record is 39.35. Sure Shugged in 36.60. Olivia Cooper. Can Olivia do what she did this morning, do a 38 second run? got 39.35 to beat. She's flying through the meadow up to, oh, it's a quick accent up, I mean, said to be spray. So it's 31 seconds, it could be, this could be, could be a new lady record for Olivia. Yes, 38.23 seconds, Olivia Cooper, a new lady's record by over a second. 38.23 seconds, fantastic. So uh, I know Nicol Mingus is watching the on, on the hill. Unfortunately, you can't participate today. But there's a target set for you, Nicol, for your next visit. 38.23. Darren Gumbly leaves the line. But Darren Gumbly is near the top of the hill. 39.68 for Darren. 39.68 for Darren Gumbly. And uh, with Richard Spedding leaving the line. Richard Spedding leaving the line in the rafter. 117 miles per hour up towards Junction. And running at, running at according to this, fastest every day speeds, which is quicker than Sean Gould's. Sean Gould's at 36. In fact, Sure Struck is fastest to qualify at the moment. Quicker than Sean Gould. Richard Spedding, 36.75. So what could Dave Warburton do? 36.38 yesterday. <laughs> Even watch this on screen, it makes you shiver. Watch it up through towards the junction, 18.4, and he's setting red sectors all the way. 
So the race site has been at 36.60, which is FTD at the moment. And it's still red through the S's, so Dave Warburton is a low 36. It's a high 35. It's a high 35. 35.76, Dave Warburton. No. So Dave Warburton, another class record after his last lecture yesterday. 35.76 and at the moment, FTD. We haven't got the big cars yet. Andrew Henson on the hill. 42.17. Some dollars pedestrian. And now we got Jonathan Varley in the Predator. Oh, Sabi is at the top of East Bray. Quick and straight through the S's, heading up towards the top of the hill. Jonathan Varley. 38.32. Iron and Price qualifying in the past, struggling a bit to match these uh, super fast times this weekend. Stretch Suzuki engine to 1720, but can he get into th below the 40 second mark? Oh, I doubt it, he just ran into the gutter at the 12 East Bray. So a bit of uh, sweeping required by the marshals. That's got 30, 39, 81, so into 39, but probably not enough to qualify. Paul Hemsway. Oh, again, wide to the first corner, nearly the barriers, but Paul had the best, had a runoff win here in 2004. So he is 19 years later, still pushing his way up the hill in the single-seater classes. Paul Ames, 104. Running in the class by himself this weekend. Paul should qualify, a 36.37 for Paul Hames. Another new record. Six hundreds quicker than Richard Spedding. Losing track of all the records we've had here today. And Paul Crute in his Jaguar OMS, uh, OMS Jaguar engine. Paul set a personal best in practice this morning. So, uh, also personal best in practice at 49.83 this morning. And that's another new, that's 49.48. Another personal best for, uh, is it for Paul Cook, I think. No, it's a 14.01 is personal best, sorry, but there's Will Hall heading up towards the top of the hill in his Gould GR15 from New car this year for Will. Won the runoff over in Ireland. 36.38. Matt Ryder, car number five, running second equal in the championship at the moment. In his GR59, the one that Sean Gould took up. Both seen a quick time of 36.62. We're going to our 35s. Uh, Soon, just to get to the runoff. My riders, uh, who's quick through junction, slowed down a little bit through the S's. 35. Rider, Matt Rider, 35.86. Now Trevor Willis. We're in this boring car this weekend. Not as much power as normal beast, and he will struggle to qualify. But I'm sure. Simon Andrews getting a lot of benefit from Trevor driving the car. I said something better about an extra driver to drive the car. Just point out some things you haven't done before. Scott Moran running at FTD pace. Trevor Willis gets below 40. 39.76. Scott Moran FTD pace. Of the, the FTD at the moment is at 35.76 with Dave Warburton. Scott Moran, 35-3-3, that's the lead, 
latest fastest time. So Alex Summers, quick and gesture, then thwarted by the rain in the runoff. Again, it's three tenths on 118 through the speed trap. Still going at F3D pace. 28 through the S's, should be 35 from this one I think. 30, oh, 34, 34.91 into 34 for the first time this weekend. There's Wallace Menges, three time champion, runoff winner yesterday. Slightly slow and Alex up to Garden Gate. 124 on the speed trap through the oh wide a wide a junction there. Paul is really really pushing this car today. I feel still doing a safe qualifying run just to make sure, but you never know. He's really pushing this car towards the finish line. Anyway, a qualifier no problem. It won't be the quickest. 36.29 for Wallace. A bit wide at the bottom of a junction just took a bit of pace off. Oh, now we've got Tom Graham, who uh, didn't appear uh, earlier in the class runs. Tom Graham now 1100cc. Um, so, going back to uh, going back to racing cars. Tom Graham 46.10. Donald Laird on the hill in the first of the class, cl class car. <laughs> the first of the sports race in the, class the classic cars, not classified, classic cars. Donald Laird in the Eldon twin cam engine, the X Formula 4 chassis, built by Daniel Dan Sullivan, Danny Sullivan, X Formula 1 driver. Um, an Indianapolis 500 winner, so that car driven by a former Indy 500 winner, now driven by Donald Laird. And I think he's had a problem because we've got a red flag at junction for Tom Wilson. A problem for Donald Laird there at the top of the hill, which allows me to draw breath. Master's running up here. To So that's a field run for Donald Laird and we'll uh, wait and hear what the issue is with Donald at the top of the hill. Well, this uh, incident is dealt with. Um, oh, a reflection of that um, qualification runs for those uh, single-seater racing cars. I'll wait till I hear the official top 12 running order before giving you anything. But if we go back to the up to 1600 CCs. 
The David Warburton is a 35.76 lead the class and up to 1600s and a new class record. And second, Sue Sogden 36.60 in that class. And also third in the class is Richard Spedding 36.75, Simon Mackay 37.74, and Olivia Cooper 38.23, a new ladies record. So I was just giving you the positions in the uh <coughs> positions in the up to sixteen hundred single seaters. And that was uh, I got as far as Olivia Cooper thirty eight point two three, Dave Duran thirty nine point six four, and Darren Gumley thirty nine point six eight. And an up to two litres class. We didn't see Ian Tucker or Steve Owen in that run. Winning that class was Joseph Varley, 38.32, from Ian Price, 13.81, and uh, Andrew Henson, 42.17. So Joseph Varley, 38.32, didn't in fact didn't in fact qualify for the runoff because I've got the runoff numbers here now. And the runoff qualifiers in order from of time from the 12th up to first 12th position qualifier was Olivia Cooper in that new ladies record of 38.23. The 11th fastest was Simon Mackay, number 78, 37.74. Number seven, Richard Spedding, was a 36.75. 7.05, Sean Gould, 36.62. Sure Stockton, number 10, 
87 Will Hall, 36.38. 8 Paul Hames, 36.37. 1 Wallace Mingus, 36.29. 5 Matthew Ryder, 35.86. 9 David Warburton, again a high quality, 35.76. 3 Scott Moran 35.33 and 2 Alex Summers 34.91 The top 3 qualifiers today, the same as the top 3 qualifiers yesterday but running order will be slightly different because obviously Sean Gould and Matt Ryder share the car so Sean Gould at the slower of the two will go first of all in the runoff he will go up to the top of the hill and come back and he'll then be followed up by the rest of the runners in the following order so first run will be 705 Sean Gould, then 74 Olivia Cooper, 78 Simon Mackay, 7 Richard Spedding, 10 Stuart Sugden, 87 Will Hall, 8 Paul Hames, 1 Wallace Mingies, 5 Matthew Ryder, 9 David Warburton, 3 Scott Moran and 2 Alex Summers. In that last session, we had a, a new class record in Class J2 for racing cars up to 1600 from David Warburton, a 35.76. In the same class, a new ladies record for Olivia Cooper, 38.23. In the Class K2 racing cars up to 2 litre, a new record for Paul Hames, this is the fourth induction class, 36.37. And in fact, in the uh, Class L, Alex Summers is 34.91, was a new class record in that class also, compared to 35.13 last year. So a lot of class records there. Tom Wilson uh, is currently the car who will be coming back for a rerun. And we've got John, John Olveston, and then we go back to running the Scottish runners once again. So that's a top 12 runoff settled. We wait for their chance to undertake that. And Force is still up at the top of the hill, obviously waiting to clear this clear this um, situation up with Donald Laird. So looking at the picture on screen, and if you're in the paddock, you've seen this lovely Brabham BT38 of John Alberston and thought to yourself, oh, John Alberston drove a BT-38 last year, but it wasn't that colour. Well, indeed, it wasn't that colour, and it wasn't even the same car. Last year's John drove a BT-38, which was a Formula 3 car. And this one is a Formula 2, Formula 2 chassis number 15, which was a uh, Jägermeister colours, Jägermeister colours, which uh, Graham Hill drove those colours in period, but not that particular car. This particular car was um, run by the Australian International Racing Organization, uh, whose drivers were Brian Maguire and Alan Jones, the world champion. But Alan Jones never actually drove the car either. But the car has recently been run in historic Formula 2 with a BDA engine by Nigel Edwards. But um, John has fit a BDG engine built from parts by his mechanic. So he says, I love the engine, glorious car, glorious engine, lovely car to drive. So he's got two BT38s, and um, he had to part exchange the Lotus 23B he had. So John, lover of great classic racing cars. So the Formula 2 BT2, BT38 of the period 1972. So over 50 years old uh, nowadays. And the car... Should be familiar to some of you, but probably not as current kind of format. Um, the car was raced by Stuart Robb at Ingleston, um, and presumably also Knock Hill in the late 70s, early 80s, when it bought, uh, had a Falconer, what's called Falconer bodywork on it, the more aerodynamic, full bodywork. Um, and um, John was telling me that when he met Stuart recently, he showed him the car, and uh, Stuart obviously didn't recognise it as a car he'd driven all those years ago. So that's the John Alberston BT-30 Brabham, now running in the class by itself, since uh, George Cole and Nicola Mingis shared Chevron B45, 
Uh, unfortunately, he had engine issues yesterday. And not already today, Nicola on the hill having a quiet weekend spectating. So we'll just wait while um, we get the cars down. Uh, I didn't actually give you the positions in class in the big single seater cars. As I say, Alex Summers, fastest in class, the 34.91 was a class record. Um, second in class, Scott Moran, 35.33. Matthew Ryder, third, 35.86. Wallace Mingis, 36.29. Will Hall, 36.38. And the last qualifier from that class, Sean Gould, 36.62. So there on screen, for those watching online, is the John Alberston Bravo in glorious close-up. Thanks Rich Danby for the, for the camera work here in the paddock. That shows the visual lines and colour and condition of that car. BT38 was probably the last of the successful Brabham mass-produced cars. Brabham a customer, produced a number of customer cars uh, from its early days as a MRD they were called originally. Uh, until somebody pointed out that MRD, if pronounced uh, in French, is a, a rather rude word. So they changed the name from MRD to Brabham. Uh, Brabham uh, and Ron Tornak built the cars. So the BT stands for Brabham Tornak. And the BT-38 was a uh, match produced in Formula 3 and Formula 2 form. Uh, and the following years, BT-40, BT-41 were not so successful. At which point, Brabham gave up uh, producing customer cars and concentrated on his Formula 1 team, the BT-42-44s. We started winning Grand Prix again for them. One of the drivers of uh, Brabham Cars uh, in his career was uh, our very own Jerry Burrell, who um, unfortunately lost his life in 1773 in a Chevron, but um, Darren Banks has recently produced a book about Jerry Burrell, a lovely book full of great photographs and information about Jerry and his life with interviews with people who knew him. Um, if you can get a copy of Darren Banks' book about Jerry Burrell, it's well worth getting a copy. called Leftist Too Soon, I think it's called, but uh, yeah, you look online, you'll find, I'm sure you'll find copies of it to be produced. Oh, some people waving at us from the, uh, <laughs> from the, uh, under the tree there, obviously by the speaker, they can actually hear me. <laughs> so online, showing the good Scottish hill climbers in action. <laughs> so they're just waiting for their run, obviously, once they uh, get these, uh, cars back down the hill again and get the situation cleared up and then these Scottish Championship runners will have their third time run and give the uh, runoff containers time to get the cars prepared for the runoff. Interior view there of a Peugeot 206, that's one of the reeds. So that's John Lowe, John Lowe's Peugeot 121 and there's uh, the the Sub Zero of the Sutherlands, GPS Sub Zero. Another example of a locator field, we call them. Uh, the class of kit car, which takes its basis as of the design as a Lotus or the Caterham 7. Lotus Westfield, Caterhams, GBSs, low cost, any number of uh, British kit cars built the same design, same basic design, but there's the one behind. Slightly different, it's a silver ride, it's a rear wheel, rear engined, uh, rear engined car. I think it's probably running a Yamaha R1, I'm not sure, but a lot of the silver rides do run R1 Yamahas. And then behind that is that amazing Nissan drift car.
So on screen, a close-up view of the interior of that drift car. I'm sure the steering wheel to go on there when he gets into the car. Um, but yes, I'm Carl Marshall. Uh, I think you'd probably find this a rather cheaper weekend than his normal drifting weekend. Certainly, he won't be using too many tyres. I believe he said somebody uses 16 sets of rear tyres. Or is it 16 rear tyres? Whatever, it's a lot of rear tyres during one weekend's drifting. And by contrast, there's Alex Hale with lovely MG Midget. Still racing uh, in the MG Midget series, these cars. And a number of other MG racing club series down south in England mainly. But they are eligible also for the Scottish, Cl Scottish Classic. Lewis Force Car Championship, I'm sure as well. Well, Tom Wilson's back in his mini. And I'll be this on screen. Uh, is uh, Tom Kenny's Janetta G15, produced in the uh, period with imp engines. This one has got fairly unique, I imagine, an Alfa Romeo flat four. Alfa Romeo flat four. Uh, half a student engine in the back of it. So 1800 cc's as opposed to the M's, anything up from 875 to 1100. Uh, Close-up view of the Alpha engine in the back of that car. Very low down obviously, flat four. Twin carburetors, one for each bank. I have a couple of Alpha students myself and it was a devil to get those carburetors sometimes to be in tune with each other. But a lovely smooth running engine, which uh, the Alpha Suit was probably one of the most underrated of the early hot hatches, probably one of the best early hot hatches in many people's eyes. But uh, eventually outclassed by things like the Volkswagen Golf GTI and the slightly larger engine hot hatches that came through. And of course, Alpha Suit prone to. The dreaded tin worm being built in the south of Italy with allegedly cheap Russian steel. So I think we're going to get cars coming down off the hill soon because we have the trailer back in the paddock with the Eldon. Or we're going to get cars going up for a couple of runners. Now I think we get Tom Wilson going up and John Alveston going up. So we'll get the two cars up first. Tom Wilson getting his gloves and helmet on, so he's obviously going up very shortly, and John Alberston also with his helmet on. Graham White Jr. there, chatting away to the people in there. There's 804, um, and there's Audi. 804 being Mark McDonald and his Audi A4. Sharing that car with John Keane. So, wave to wave, um, wave the, wave the world, Malcolm. <laughs> you're, on, you're on YouTube. Streaming to the world from Dune Hill Climb in Scotland. Malcolm McDonald. Shows the range of cars you can get to come and compete in the Hill Climb. So if you're watching, either online or on the hill itself, and you fancy having a go, if you're on the hill, come down and Chat to those in the paddock. If you're online, look out for all various sites on there, various Facebook groups, and look out for the website of the Hill Climbing Sprint Association, who are the, uh, shall we say, the trade body in the in the UK for hill climbing and sprinting, as it says in the tin. So the HSA run the run championships across the country, and also run the British Sprint Championship. Uh, sprints just being a hill climb without a hill and a number of airfields and racing circuits uh, run sprint rounds uh, in Scotland you've got Boyndy, Golspey who are, are sprint rounds and you can compete in the same cars and sprints and hill climbs and combinations of the Scottish Speed Championship
So we've got um, Tom Wilson turning his car at the moment. So we're ready to go with Tom and John. And I think we've got a couple of double drivers in the Scottish classes to go up at the end of the batch. So it's Tom Wilson, the rally prepared Mini Cooper S. So I uh, guess the top he'll win his class. Unfortunately, Donald Laird had an accident in that Eldon. And Tom's away. The sublime to the sublime from, from the Mini Cooper S Rally Repaired, very original to a lovely brown BT38, who's just about to leave the line now. So, as I said, we've got a couple more runners now who are the Double drivers from the Scottish Championship contenders. contenders. Those are uh, Jody Gordon and Malcolm McDonald. So after John Olverson got up, Jody Gordon started off on the hill. Tom Wilson's time is um, 60.44. He's already in class by himself in John Olverson's time. It was a 48.83 yesterday, 40, oh, 49.33 today. Jody Gordon, oh, flinging it through, um, through a junction there, followed by Martin McDonald in the Audi. So now after these two cars, we'll have a break and I'll grab a bite to eat, maybe, and a slurp of juice to get ready for the last hurrah of today's hill climbing. The Scottish Championship class is followed by the runoff. Jody Gordon, 53.06, which is a new class record. 53.06, a new class record in the Scottish A1 class. Malcolm McDonald is in the 63, 62-63 bracket. But even he's kicked up a bit of dust on the Tove spray. He should be at the same time at this run. Maybe got a 61 out of it. 61, 61.69 he does indeed. 61.69 for Malcolm McDonald's his best time of the weekend. So now we've got all the cars at the top of the hill to come back down again. And we'll get on with the Scottish Championship's third time run and the runoff in very short notice.
Brady Warner there in the paddock for Olivia Cooper. As Rich Dammy runs around to try and get hold of her. Unfortunately, I can't go and interview her. I don't have a radio mic, but um, that was a stunning run from Olivia. Cars coming down the paddock to get to their <coughs> positions. Unfortunately, the, uh, the cars we need to go up the hill are blocking in the cars coming down the hill at the moment, so they're coming down around the paddock there, the two uh, Raptors coming round. And there's Olivia Cooper and her Force T8. Ah. Yep, so Olivia again could crash all around for that wonderful run. So they walk way to the top of the hill to come back down and see her family waiting for her down here. At the car, everybody having a great, great, very popular character living in the, in the paddock. The old Cooper family, the Hillcoming family, Father Richard was a record holder at Shelsey Walsh for a number of years. And the brothers Tom and George, both also top hill climbers. And I think I remember Tom scoring points here in a call in a runoff back uh, way back. And I went to runoff in way back 2004, I think, in a little one litre OMS. There's Liam, husband and children, all happy for, for Olivia. It's a big tussle with Nicola Mingus a few years ago. Missed out on uh, doing last year because her children were sitting their exams. Um, the comeback here with the vengeance. So, back to the action. And it's the third version of, third run for the Scottish Hill Climb Championship cars. And it's um, Auntie Reid. Auntie Reid is Dats and Cherry. Dats and Cherry. So old, it's called Dats and not in this one. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Dats yeah, and, uh, and Cherry. Why Reg, I think it is. Yeah, why Reg, Dats and Cherry. Oh, definitely getting quicker, quicker through the junction there. It's well out towards the, uh, the rectus hill barrier. Porto Beach Bray. He did a 66.4 as his best, probably his best run so far. Oh, it's 55 so to the top last corner. Can he get into the 65s or even lower? Everybody's improving, it seems to be. No, it's still a 66.75. 66.75 for Ante. And he's followed up by Ian Crawford in the Twingo. Uh, running ahead of Brian Hunter this time, Ian Crawford, the white Twingo, is the first of the two you'll see. Probably just happened to the, how they were lined up in the paddock. But it's 112 Ian Crawford, but Brian Hunter setting purple sectors, should be going quicker so far in class. Uh, Brian Hunter leading the class, Ian Crawford, 63.17, so his fastest time from this morning is the one that counts, Brian Hunter. There's already in the 61s, a couple of uh, runs so far, so we are looking to get to 60s, it's a 61.04 this morning, so maybe we'll get to 60s this afternoon. It was obviously in excellent condition. David Reid through Avenue, through uh, Junction in his uh, Subaru. Time for Brian Hunter is a 60.38. In that little twinger, 60.38. So it takes that class easily. <coughs> David Reed running himself. 48.69. His first time under the 49 barrier. Callum Norris in the Silver Riot. Jim Howarth, many not here today, but Callum Norris, Silver Riot, followed by John Keane in the Audi. Callum Norris, Purple Sectors. But he is running by himself in the class, which was quicker than he was earlier. 52.29 for Callum Norris. And Sandy Reid running by himself. John Keane it is. Uh, well Sandy Reid's heading up towards the hill, but John Keane ahead of him.
John Keane's a 49 point. No, that's not right. Wait till it's finished. Wait till it's finished. John Keane, 60.04. John Keane, 60.04, would win the class. For Neil Ross, it's 56.70 in the Porsche. We're into Mazdas now, so uh, Sandy Reid, we don't have time for Sandy Reid at all. Got a red flag, a red at, flag the at the entrance of the tunnel for the Jim tunnel King, but Michael King, Michael King is finished at 52.98. Michael King finished at 52.98 and Jim King being red flagged. I've been caught, a uh, commentator on screen, <laughs> showing the world pretty city, little corner, just by the start line. Just comment, nibbling, I think, a bit there and having a drink. I better get back to work. <laughs> Do yum yum, Jess. <laughs> Go and look at myself on the YouTube when I get home now. I can tell. See what they caught me doing. I was just having a little yum yum and a drink. Well, we've got a quiet spell on the hill. Flag for Jim King. But Michael King did, did get a time, so I presume it's just sweeping. Or debris on the track. Cuthbert and the Mazda have been pushed back towards the start. They got another start. No, sorry, that's um, that's Jim King, number one one eight. He'll get a rerun before Alan Cuthbert. King leaves the light on his rerun. So they well, we have these Scottish Championship runs, uh, the runners and riders for the round 14 of the Avon Tires British Hill Climb Championship will be preparing their cars in the paddock. The 12 fastest registered contenders here this weekend. Including local drivers Simon Mackay, Stuart Sugden, Wallace Mingies. So Jim King is over the line almost. 
in a time of 56.05. Alan Cuthbert towards the bottom of East Bay while Neil Gurwood, the class record holder as of today. Class records improved each time today in his first two runs from 52.55, which it was before the weekend, to 51.82. Alan Cuthbert 56.18. But Neil Gurwood looking for a low 51. And it's a 52.47, so not as quick, but he still gets the class strike from earlier and the class win. John Lowe, John Lowe. Pedro, 15.50. Campbell Gordon on the hill in the Pedro 205, which is son Jody, set a new class record a few minutes ago. Fifty six point one eight. And now it's John Keenan the Audi. I think with a mistaken identity earlier. Um the time shoes timers were showing him as having already had a, a run in sixty point zero four sixty point zero four, but I think that time was actually for Sandy Reed. In the key in the Lurgo. Luego, he was on the hill but didn't seem to get a time. This is John Keane now heading up towards the top of the hill in the Audi. Sixty-three point oh six, and the smoke is billowing in from the rear tyres of a of a Callum Callum Marshall's Nissan. So John Keem is 63.06, Kenneth Sutherland 52.80. What's Andrew, Glover, Andrew Grover going to do? Callum Marshall leaves the line in the Nissan Turbo. Black lines up the first corner. Very sedated for this car, but he's learning that. Straighter is probably better in a hill climb. Time for Andrew Grover. Andrew Grover's time, 45.77. Alan Marshall followed by Tom Kenny in the Ginetta. Alan Marshall, he's got to be in a 52.8. Yes, a much, uh, much, much more. Focus run this time, or bit of back tail out to the Tommy's brain through the S's. But having fun here this weekend in hill climbing. Could we see him coming to hill climbing more permanently? 52.73. Again, a quicker time. So, uh, Tom Kenny in this Alfa Romeo engine Janetta. He'll be followed by Kieran Bailey in the Lotus 7, who should be the last runner of this Scottish Championship batch. So we settle down and after this to wait for no sign no this time of Alex Hazelwood. So uh, Tom Kenny is a 63.61. Q 
Newton Bailey. Uh, again, set a class record three times yesterday. For London, it's all class record twice today so far. So, what's this last one going to be? Uh, I don't think it's going to be a record this time around. No, it's a 50.06. So that's the end of the Scottish Championship class runs there. And I'm just going to have a wee break while we get ready for the runoff. Very soon we'll start in this top 12 runoff just seeing the non-qualified drivers going up the hill to watch. There's always a great interest in the, the runoffs at every hill climb you go to. I hope uh, if you've been watching your spectating all afternoon, I can see a few of you still up the hill. So good. Glad to see you're still all here. We'll try and keep you uh, fully informed with the times of the cars as they go up the hill. I'll be able to give you times of 64 feet at Garden Gate. The speed through the speed trap just before junction. The time at junction and the time at the start of the S's before the final finishing time. And we'll try and keep you up to date as to how a car is doing against the others as we've already gone before it. With Sean Gould going first, and uh, he'll probably set quite a quick time, so we'll try and do some comparisons. Not just between Sean and the rest, but between other cars running close together. For example, the two sunk, the two rafters, etc., etc. So we just wait for the hill to clear and for Sean to be ready to take his car to the line. So going back quickly over the Scottish classes, I'll just give the class winners. Uh, the road slow is up to 1400. The class winner was Jody Gordon in a new class record. 53.06 in Road Saloon's Class A2. It was Brian Hunter, 60.38 in the Twingo. In Class A3, David Reeve was running himself. Class A4, as was Callum Norris in Class A4. And Sandy Reid in Class A6. And Neil Ross in Class A8. And the Mazda Class was won by Neil Goodwood. Today with a 51.82 over the three runs. And of Michael King, 52.98, and Jim King, 54.38. Uh, John Lowe ran himself in class B2, as did Andrew Grover in class B4, and Kenneth Sullivan in class B6. Sport Labour, Matthew Price did not uh, to participate this weekend. Colin Marshall in the Nissan improved greatly over the weekend to 52.7. And the classic thoroughbreds won by Kieran Bailey with 49.91.
So that gets you up to date on those classes. So, I can see from the screen in front of me that uh, Sean Gould has been pushed up towards the end of the assembly here to get ready for his run. Tire covers are being taken off by Roger Moran and jo uh, Andrew Lane and John Ryder. Sean is in the car and he'll just wait the signal to come forward. And we'll see how this compares to qualifying time. So Sean's qualifying time was a 36.62 and that was ninth position. But he's running first because he's shooting car with Matthew Ryder who qualified in fourth position. So Sean will go down after his run and we'll have a driver's change over. And then Sean will be for the first car. After Sean going up will be Olivia Cooper. So hopefully this runoff today will be uh, held in consistent weather conditions. Consistent track conditions. The cars do have to go in the right order, so if at any point a car is unable to take his rifle position, he cannot go to the back of the queue. He uh, will record a no run. The cars have to go in strict order. Clerk of the course, Tim Thompson, just uh, making sure the timekeepers, etc., are all ready. Sean's three, three, three tire spin from Sean. Heads up towards the lane, lined up on the right hand side of the track. Give a good line into the first corner. So Sean Gould, the first car to run in this runoff here at Doon. It's a 1.98 64-foot time, that's greater than 1G of gravity, 1.98 for Sean, and up towards Garden Gate is 12.3, and 125 miles per hour through his speed trap, 18.33 at Junction, so heading up towards the S's, which will be about 29.37. So it's the first run, so they set the standard is a 30, 35.99. 35.99 for Sean Gould. So there's the uh, crowd in the paddock watching. Uh, oh, Billy's taking a chair for somebody. Uh, <laughs> Billy Cater. Club secretary taking his chair to go and sit and watch the time clock in the paddock. There you see all the uh, people watching. There's a, a time display in the paddock above the little hut, just to the right of the camera. So uh, if you can't get up the hill, then you can sit there and watch the time ticking down. Roger Moran. Uh, Wishing uh, Olivia Cooper good luck. She has qualified for runners before and scored points in the championship before.
it takes a lot longer to come down the hill than to go up the hill. So we're still waiting for Sean Gould to come down. And here he comes, rolling past me here in the start line area and down towards his waiting crew on the grassy banks. Turns around and then we pull back onto the grass, ready for the next run from Matt Ryder. Just taking it back towards the tarmac area, keeping the tyres away from the grass. And there goes Olivia, and quickly as Sean gets out of the way, Olivia coming up to the line in this 1600cc Force TA. A popular chassis on the hill now, we've got about a dozen altogether I think being built across hill climb and sprint drivers. And Stuart Bickley, one of the latest drivers to uh, run a Force TA and he did a, a stonking time in the 1100s and probably just missed out on qualifying by a, a few positions. Tires being cleaned in the front. And she's coming up. Just the one tyre warm up, spin for uh, Olivia. And being positioned on the line, the timing strut lined up with the timing beam. Eyes are down. So, un unfair to compare Olivia against Sean Gould's time, because obviously Sean's a much bigger capacity car, so we'll We'll take Olivia Cooper's time as a baseline for the next few runners. So she's 2.19 to 64 foot and 13.4 to Garden Gate. 114 through the speed trap and 20.01 at Junction. Very fast up the top of the hill. Slight wiggle at the top of his spray, but through the middle of the S's. 31.66 through the S's. What she's going to do is 30. 8.64 so just outside the record from earlier but sub what it was before 38.64 so we'll use Olivia as a comparison at the moment and this car is uh, Simon Mackay we're now running with three Raptors in a row Simon Mackay in the first of the Raptors the generation 2 version didn't qualify yesterday but qualified in 11th position today at a 37.74 he's 2.11 to 64 feet and it's 30.01 to guard and gauge quicker than Olivia and speed through speed travel 110 so Johnson 19.47 Again, quicker than Olivia at the moment. He's doing it short, obviously, but quicker. And Olivia uh, at the S. Oh, he is. Oh, well. Oh. So, made a mess of East Bray again, Simon. Wide in the first sector. Kicked up the dust across the other side of the road. Caught the, caught the verge of the other side. And it's a 39.23 for Simon. Just trying a little bit too hard there. Perfectly safe. Just caught both sides of the, the, gra the, the track at East Bray. Two ways in the X, two ways in the entry, across to uh, catching the other side as he corrected it. But safely to the top of the hill, 13.23. Yes, he was about half a second up in Olivia going through Junction, and then he was uh, four tenths down going through the S's. He lost, a, he lost a second there probably, with that little uh, off at East Bray. A bit of a delay now while they clear the dust and the, and the stones off the track but it shouldn't be too long Steve Marsh setting up the GoPro on Richard Spedding's car tapping him in the head ready to go our lights up so what can Spedders do? lost his class record today oh Car's just cut out, I'm sure it'll start again. No problem. Yeah, he lost his clash record to Paul Hames today. So it's off the line. 
And 2.05, the quickest apart from Sean so far. So he needs to get under 13 seconds to Garden Gate. It's 12.5, that's the quickest again of uh, the smaller engine cars. 115. And its junction is a less than 18.85. Much smoother through uh, East Bray, and it's a quick run through the edges. 29.9, that's two seconds up. She was 36, 36.54, 36.54 for Richard Spedding. Quick in this qualifying run. Three warm ups for Stuart Sugden. Can we he uphold the Scottish Raptor driver's honour here? He's a 36.6 in qualifying. Finished third in yesterday's runoff and running number 10, so he's 10th overall in the championship last year. Leaves the line now. 1.92. That's the quickest of all so far. Garden Gate 12.49, it's a very, very close to Richard Spedding. 118 quicker through the speed trap, 18.6 to Junction, to up at the moment. S is a bit of a S is between 8.7, he's faster than Richard Spedding at the moment. Can he get into low 36s or below? 36.07. 36.07. Second place at the moment, just hundreds of points on gold. So Will Hall next. Will Hall next in his new GR59, four-liter Judd sports car engine. Will getting much more used to the car now after his turbocharged force that he had for previous years. So, uh, runoff with him in Craig Antlet in the rain. Oh, that quick start of Will. 1.89, that's not surprising. Always very quick start of Will Hall. Well, 0.12, three tenths up, Garden Gate. Speed away at 124, speed charge speed 18.1, quicker than Sean even, through the junction. It's 0.23 up at junction, up to the S's. The tail out at all these Bray, but it's still off the S's by 0.4. So this could be the 35, mid 35s and take the lead. 35.58, Will Hall takes the lead. Paul Hames. One of when you're here back in 2004. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 1.3 turbocharged Gould GR15, one of the early GR59s. Been having it running now for about eight or nine years, I imagine. Gradually developed over the years, a number of issues with the engine, and this year was uh, differential, I believe, but now it's running sweetly for the last three or four meetings. Good finish yesterday. Currently ninth in the championship. Leaves the line. 2.01. But he'll be uh, in the mid-twelves up towards Garden Gate. 12.38. So uh, just quick and slowly. 105. Not quite so quick. There's no little bit speed, 18.6 away. Come to Stuart Sugden, so that's his target at the moment, it's 36.07 of Stuart Sugden. 28.72, and he's still a bit slower, so it could be mid 36s for Paul. He's got to find a bit more here. 36.65. 36.65, so slower than qualifying. Slows him behind Richard Spedding. <laughs> 
So Willis Ming is qualified in fifth position. The current champion. Off the line. 1.94. Another quick start for Willis. Could he get into the Livins up to Garden Gate? 12.02, quickest so far. And it'll be 127, 127 through speed trap. Again, under 18 seconds to junction. Well up on the clock at the moment. 0.18 up on Will. Yeah, it's still just up going through. Yeah, oh, he ran wide into the last corner. Ran right the that maybe lost him a little bit. 34.99 though. 34.9, held it together and takes the lead. 34.99 Matthew Ryder in the car run by Sean Gould so currently Wallace Mingis leads the 34.99 from Will Hall the 35.58 Like 2.08, one of the slowest getaways. Garden Gate 12.41, so he's equivalent with Stuart Shrugged at the moment. Got 121 miles per hour and the 18.3 picked up a little bit there. He's still behind Wallace by nearly half a second. Heading off the top of his break. And it's 29.02, he's getting closer to kind of get past Wallace's last stretch to the finish. 34, 35.15 just misses out by 16 hundredths of a second. Wallace Mingy still leads the way. Dave Warburton now in the 1600cc Gould GR59. Really was one of the two to lose out really badly yesterday. And we qualified second, he then caught the worst of the rain. Porsche is loving dry weather today, so can he get close to the clash record he said earlier? 35.76 is his clash record, it's two seconds exactly away from the 64 feet. Garden Gate is a 12.31. So Quinn to Paul Hames really look at the mid 36s at 117 and 18.5. So mid 36s is looking the target at the moment. Point two seven. That's improving now, so he could get into the low 36s, maybe a high 35. Father Allen watching there, close to 35.71, 35.71. That is quicker than this class record. 35.71, and puts him into third position, fourth, fourth position. Puts uh, David Warburton into fourth position. At the moment, so it's Wallace Mingis, for Matt Ryder, Will Hall, and David Warburton. Two to go, Scott Moran, 16th champion. Cool GR59 again, Judd DB4 engine. Two seconds exactly. And it's Garden Gate in 11.86, that's the quickest to Garden Gate. Our first one under 122 through the speed trap. 17.7, .7, so quicker than many Wallace up to the junction, flying across the meadow up East Bray. Up in the clock at the moment, through the S's, he's still up by nearly half a second. Is this going to be a winning run? 34.37, 34.37 for Scott Moran. And that's not far off the record. 16 hundreds away from the record. And takes the lead. So now we've got Alex Summers, number two, second last year in the championship. Four so far this year, really badly hit by the weather yesterday and failed to score. And he's now actually on the, the far left of the line, left of the line now, 1.85. All the 
always a quick start for Alex in this car. This will be an 11 second into Garden game, sure. 11.43, that's half a second up on, on Scotty. 122, same speed. And 17.2, this is a potential record breaking run here. Half a second up at Junction on Scott Moran. Through the S's, 28.08. Holding it together, crowd all watching. 34.29 just outside the record. Eight hundredths outside the hill record there for Alex Summers. But a well well won win there for Alex. Well deserved this weekend after his problems yesterday. So Alex Summers wins that runoff at thirty four point two in his second runoff win of the year. Second place by eight hundredths of a second Scott Moran. And Willis Ming is 34.99. Matt Ryder, 35.15. Will Hall in fifth position, 35.58. David Warburton, a great sixth position, 35.71. Sean Gould, 35.99. Stuart Sogden, 36.07. Richard Spedding, 36.54. Tenth position, Paul Hames, 36.65. 11th at Olivia Cooper, 3864, but with that new ladies record. And 12th position, Simon Mackay, 13.23 uh, after that little excursion at the top of East Bray. So I'm just going to try and work out the current championship positions for you, unofficially, of course. Um, so after round 14 of the British Championship Wallace Ming is maintaining his run of top three positions in every round. And in fact, um, that I believe from previous calculations, Wallace's 124th consecutive qualification for a runoff. 124 consecutive qualification for a runoff. His last field to qualify back at Lowton Park in 2009. Two thousand nine. Two thousand nineteen it must be. But yeah, one hundred twenty-four consecutive qualifications for Wallace Ming is in the British Hill Claim Championship. So he leads the championship in one hundred twenty-eight points. Second place, Scott Moran, one hundred two. Martha Ryder still in third at one hundred. Fourth position, Alex Summers moves a bit closer on eighty-six. And Sean Gould is on 70 in 5th position. Will Hall moves up to 6th position in the absence of Trevor Willis and Dave Duran. So Will Hall now in 6th in 60 points. Trevor Willis 51 in 7th, 49 for David Duran in 8th in joint 9th position now. Richard Spedding and Paul Hames. While David Warburton remains in 10th and Stuart Sugden moves up uh, to 11th equal on 11 points. So here we go, the end of another great weekend of British hill climbing here at Doon. The weather's been kind to us today, stayed dry all day through, some fantastic speeds, some fantastic times, class records galore, a great hill record, a ladies hill record for Olivia Cooper just coming down the hill now, to give her a big round of applause for Olivia Cooper and that Pale blue Porsche TA, a new hill record for Olivia, new class records for Dave Warburton, for Alex Summers, for Paul Hames, and class records galore in the other classes. So many thanks to everybody who's helped run this meeting, the Lonely Car Club who organising the Orange Army of Marshals and the Yellow Shirted Volunteers, the drivers, mechanics and all the supporters for making such a, a great event. The rescue crews, the recovery vehicles, the fence makers who, unfortunately, 
We're not needed very often this weekend. And thanks to you all for coming along and watching Dune Hill Climb here in Dune in person and also on the screen at home or wherever you're watching it. So another great weekend of British Hill Climb Championship. British Championship Hill Climb. Alex Summers got a big hug from mother and father. That's a lot better. He was very upset, depressed last night about the weather and facing his run. Tim Wilson, the coordinator, and Tim Wilson is all congratulating Alex who gets another sticker for the rear ring of his car. So well done, Alex. A great run. So thanks also to Rich Danby and Elner for setting up this magnificent stream again today. There's the winner's sticker he gets for winning the around 2023 winner. Join the other one he's got on there from this year. Avon Tires for sponsorship of the event and the championship. And there'll be a prize giving, I'm sure, here very shortly for all both days of events. The other cars returning to the paddock now. Wallace Ming is there. A good, a good third position, Wallace. Maintains his championship lead. And all the others trailing in to the respective garages. So there we go. End of our weekend. Next weekend for these drivers is Harewood in a couple of weeks' time. So if you're in Yorkshire, have a, take a trip along to see them. And then the rest of, the rest of Cuddy Bay, then go to the Channel Islands, and then back to Middles for Shelsey Walsh, Prescott, a couple of Lotons, and also down to Devon for Wiscombe Park. So still a number of rounds to go. That's 14 rounds so far. We're just short of halfway through. Total of 30 altogether. So thank you, every, for making this successful weekend for helping with the uh, photography. We'll keep uh, here for the online stream. As long as we have camera picture, we'll keep talking about what we're seeing in front of us. Wallace getting graduated by Richard Summers. Wallace and Alice, great friends on and off the track. So there's a happy man tonight. Oh, the first thing to do, get the spray the sticker on. So we'll count them up for me, got the two, five, seven, eleven, seventeen. It's on the lower wing, Alex. <laughs> two, six, eight, eleven. I think that's seventeen tickets he's got there for the last few years. Make sure it's straight now. There we go. Twenty twenty three winner again. Well done, Alex Summers. Motorsport UK TV, the home of unmissable British motorsport video. Bringing you all the action from the British Championships. Taking you behind the scenes giving you top tips to succeed in every discipline. Showcasing the best equipment. And much, much more. Visit motorsportuk.tv today and make sure you never miss a moment.